York Jets against the Detroit Lions. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Dotson, who invites you to test drive the exciting new Nissan Pulsar NX at your Dotson dealer. And by Light Beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. This is the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, the scene set for tonight's game, the scene set for the most recent Super Bowl game, the victory of the Niners over the Bengals. Hello again, everyone. Good to have you with us. First, a quick news note, that late and unlamented strike. You can begin now, finally, to forget about it. The player rep voted 19 to 9 today to ratify the accord reached between the union and management. On Wednesday, the rank and file of the players will vote, and ratification overwhelmingly expected. That out of the way, let's look at tonight's game. It's my personal conviction that the Jets have personnel as fine as that of any team in the National Football League. Right now, they're on a roll. They've won three in a row. In the meantime, I happen to believe the Detroit Lions are a powerhouse team whose record, instead of being 2-2, two and two, should be 4-0. Oh. To amplify first on the Jets, my colleague, the Gipper. Thank you, Howard. In that case, we shouldn't have a victory tonight. <laughs> Both teams are powerhouses. Detroit has their act together. They feel they do. They were really hurt by the long layoff. But for the New York Jets, well, they're looking forward to another playoff here. They got there last year, was knocked off by Buffalo. But it was the first time they've been to the playoffs since 1969. They feel this time they can go all the way to Pasadena. They lead the entire NFL in total offense, nearly 400 yards a game. And they lead in rushing, thanks to a second-year man out of UCLA. And you'll see a lot of him tonight, Freeman McNeil. They have great speed on the outside, Johnny Lamb Jones, Wesley Walker. If they can put it all together, they are truly an awesome team. As for Detroit, well, at quarterback, they have a few problems. A man who's been familiar with problems at that delicate position over the years, very Don good. Meredith, might have a thought or two on that. Very, I do, as a matter of fact. Thank you very much. But the, the thought is a short one. I, number one, the two teams that Detroit lost to, the Chicago Bears and New York Giants, the coaches here in Detroit, and I think the fans and maybe the general public that are interested feel that they should have won both those two games. Those games would have had them 4-0. As things happen, though, if things go wrong, they look for somebody who done it. And the who done it right now is Eric Hippel. I and mean, he was a really a brilliant star that burst on the scene one of our Monday night games a year ago. Came in for an injured starter, Gary Danielson, and they called him Eric Magic Man Hippel. Well, the magic is gone. Monty Clark, to his credit, made a decision early in the week. No more fooling around. Gary Daniels is my new quarterback. I like that. I think that's going to be a good one. And don't forget they got that Motown motor, old Billy Sims. So they got a good team, too. Let's go back to Frank. We'll get this thing kicked off. Thank you, Dandy D. Looking down at the Silver Dome, it was not sold out. They had 13,000 seats unsold yesterday. The game blacked out in the area. The Silver Dome, a beautiful structure here in Pontiac Mission. Seats. Michigan seats a little over 80,000. Looking down on the field, set to kick off the Detroit Lions. The Jets on your left, they will be moving left to right. Dropping for the Jets, number 42 is Bruce Harper. He's back there with Kurt Sohn, second year free agent out of Fordham, who will try it out early in his career with the Los Angeles Rams. But right now, you're looking at Eddie Murray. Fine place kicker, kicks the ball high and can get it into the end zone, but it hangs for a long time. The Detroit Lions, two and two, battling to stay alive in the nine-game regular abbreviated season. The Jets are three and one, and as Howard mentioned, they're on a roll. They have won three in a row since losing their opener. High kick. Kurt Stone. And Stone out of the 15-yard line to the 17-yard line. Highly enthusiastic crowd as we watch Richard Todd take the field, seventh year out of Alabama, and really coming into his own. He really reduced his interception percentage a year ago under the tutelage of Joe Walton, the offensive coordinator. He'll be in there with Freeman McNeil. We spoke of Freeman McNeil. Freeman, of course, needs 14 yards tonight to regain the NFL rushing lead that he had until Tony Collins of New England took it away yesterday. Tony Collins, 443 yards. Freeman McNeil, 430. Marcus Allen right there with 415. First and 10. Todd to the air. Quickly he goes to Freeman McNeil. And McNeil out close to a first down. Somewhere out around the 28-yard line. There'll be no huddle by the Jets. They're going to go with a rapid offense. There was no huddle, and they're ready to go. First down and 10. They did this in the opener against Miami. He's, he's I 
basically just to shake up the defense as Mike Augustiniak comes out of his fullback position and gets about five yards. It'll be second down at five. And once again, they'll go without a huddle. Not a bad idea. For the Lions, they are in their familiar 4-3 defense. Give Augustiniak six, second down at four. Freeman McNeil cuts out close to the 40-yard line. He'll have another jet first down. Ken Bonetti, that middle linebacker. And the Jets are on the prowl. They have the speed man, the top of your screen, Rusty Walker. They like to run a couple of plays like this and then let go a bomb. Richard Todd looking, and Richard Todd goes down in the arms of Doug English, who came in to the night's game all fired up. And the loss is all the way back to the 33-yard line, a loss of about six. And it'll give us a moment to set the defense, English's teammates. Al Baker, number 60, he is the big dangerous sack man. It'll be quite a battle between Chris Ward and left tackle for the Jets tonight and Al Baker. Those are your linebackers. Stan White, one of the best in the business. You've seen a lot of him on television lately. And there is your secondary. Second down, 16. Sacked by English, back to the 33-yard line. Johnny Lamb Jones now split to the right. Wesley Walker, top of your screen. The tight end, by the way, Jerome Barker who is much like a wide receiver. Draw play. McNeil tossed it up, and it's picked off. Taken there quickly by Bobby Watkins, a rookie from Southwest Texas State. And so the Jets, three quick plays, were once again on a roll, and they cough up the football, and Detroit has a first and 10, 43-yard line. Got a good handoff right there. Freeman tries to go through the middle, and that's Dick Baker. Knocks it out, then left ball sliding in. One time the coach says, hold on to the ball. You can't score without the what? So the Detroit Lions have a first down and 10, and Gary Danielson, as Don mentioned, has, it will be making his first start tonight. Danielson, who broke a forearm a year ago and lost his job to Eric Kippel. We'd never heard of Eric Kippel, frankly, until we arrived here for a Monday night game a year ago, and he came up with five touchdown passes, ran a couple more in, and he had the job up until last week. There is Gary Danielson. Very accurate passer. Has a tendency to be just a little bit delicate. Even though the Jets are on a roll, Monday nights have not been good for them historically. They've lost 8 out of 10 on Monday night, and they have never won on the road on a Monday night. Quickly a turnover. That's what plagued the Detroit team in their recent fray on Thanksgiving Day against the Giants. Four quick turnovers. As you look at Gary, Eric, four, at Eric pardon me, four quick turnovers, and suddenly the ball game was in the hands of the Giants. A couple of changes tonight for Detroit. David Hill, a fine former Pro Bowl tight end, not in there at least as a starter. Ulysses Norris will be the tight end number 80, four-year man out of Georgia. And we'll see a lot of Mark Nichols, the second-year man out of San Jose State, a great athlete and a fine wide receiver. On first and 10, Danielson fires it in and out of the hand of Billy Sims moving out of the backfield. It'll be second down and 10. Billy should have had it, knows it. You hate to see that, but on the first, you're going to throw that first down. Good percentage pass, and Billy was wide open and slid right through. Ted Marchabrota is the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions in his first year. You remember when he was with Baltimore? He used Lydell Mitchell at Baltimore, much as he is now using Billy Sands. They'll get the ball to him some 65 or 70 percent of the time. Second down and 10. And out of the backfield is Dexter Bussey, and Bussey will lose a yard as Bobby Jackson, the cornerback, moves up there quickly for the Jets. Let me note that the Jets have been marvelously effective in defensing the screen or flare pass. They proved that against Green Bay, which had come off a big victory, emphasizing the screen pass. And they really have a bunch of good hitters in that Jets secondary, especially Jerry Holmes. Three wide receivers, Fred Scott, 87, Mark Nichols, 86, Tracy Porter, 89, third down and 11. Detroit also likes to screen the ball to Billy Sims. And getting out of the sack as Danielson dumps it to Billy Sims. That's a good react. Billy Sims inside the 20-yard line to the 17-yard line, and now they'll mark it at the 19. First down, 10, Detroit, Lance Mel there defensively. Yeah, it's, it's basic schoolyard playground football, but it really is fun. You'll see just an individual effort. Danielson slipped out of the grass right there. 
But you don't see right there, Sally Sam sees where Daniel Zoom is. He breaks in that direction and opens up right behind and got the ball to Sam. Play was made possible by the failure of Kenny Neal to get Danielson when he had him. He tried inside the 19. Gary Danielson changing up and directing traffic as Billy Sims adjusts. Dexter Bussey and Bussey with a gain of about three to the 17-yard line. Stan Blinka, the middle linebacker defensively. There is Marty Clark, the coach of the Detroit Lions. That man is the man who put together the best offensive line I have ever seen. The offensive line of the unbeaten Miami Dolphins in their halcyon days. He likes this one, too. He says you got to have a good offensive line here. Second down and eight. The ball just inside the 17-yard line. Tracy Porter, shoots to the right. Inside handoff, they try Bussey once again, and Bussey squirms and wriggles inside the 15-yard line to the 14-yard line. It'll be third down and about five. Correction, Billy Sims on the carry as we look at the Jet defense. Key man missing, of course, as he has from the second game of the season, Joe Klecko, who led the NFL in sacks a year ago, but Mark Gaspineau is there. Line back and forth, great battle, big heavy hitter, Lance Mel grades out, they say, the best of all is Jet linebackers. Down and five. The ball at the 14-yard line. Norris, the tight end, in the slot at the top of your screen. Danielson, good protection. Good and defensive play. Good defensive play. Freddie Scott being covered by Jerry Holmes. They call him a two-pencil because he's 6'2 and 175 pounder. And he looks like one. But he's swift and he's a big hitter, as I mentioned. There's a criticism this time. Daniels will never look in any direction except to the left. Because plenty of the receivers over on the right didn't run very good routes. So the Jet defense didn't have any pressure at all. They knew where the ball was going. Fourth down, we have Eddie Murray out. Eddie Murray, three for three, involved in quite a controversy with Tom Sladeni as they held out at the beginning of the season. But he's back after the strike break. The attempt at 31 yards. Pickle gets the down, and Murray remains perfect for the season. He is four for four on the three games he has thus taken part in. We have 10.48 remaining in the first quarter, and Detroit is on the scoreboard first. We're back, and the Detroit Lions on the scoreboard first. 31-yard field goal, Eddie Murray following a fumble by Freeman McNeil. Bruce Harper, good all-around athlete. Annually is right up there among the leaders or leads the NFL in combined yardage. Eddie Murray, again, with that high kick. This one way up in the air, and it'll be sewn out of the end zone. Hurt Stone. And the hell runs okay. into his own man and a pair of Lions at the 15-yard line, and the Lions are stoked up tonight. They've been taking an awful lot of abuse here in Detroit. So has Monty Clark. They've been taking it not only from the fans, they've been getting it from their owner just as well, Bill William Clayford. You're right. You're exactly right. They have fired up. Also, they're kicking off intelligently. Twice they've kicked off, each time carefully to zone. Keep the ball away from Bruce Hall. Detroit won the first two games of the season, got off 2-0, came back after the strike, and they dropped the last two. First down at 10. Inside handoff. Freeman McNeil, a lot of quickness in McNeil, however, is... Neil at the line of scrimmage, it was Stan White. He plays that weak side linebacker, just about as good as you could expect anyone to play. Very heady player. Give McNeil a yard, it'll be second down and nine. There is what we were talking about at the very beginning of the game. Freeman McNeil, troubled with a foot injury a year ago, still led the Jets with over 600 yards. This year. Second and nine. Play action by Richard Todd. Uh, going for Wesley Walker. Should have been picked off by Bobby Watkins. In and out of his hands. Incomplete. Scared Watkins. There's no way he was expecting that ball. It, was, it went over everybody's head about five yards. But Watkins. Look, would you throw a little bit better, Todd? You want me to pick these things off for you? It just takes off. A lot of times they say it's been throwing off that back foot. The Wesley went up. Looked a little bit closer there than it did from, from this angle. Third 
down and nine. There is Walt Michaels now in his seventh year. Ball just out over the 16 yard line of the Jets. There you go. Ah, and yeah. he goes quickly to Johnny Lamb Jones, and Jones has the first down out around the 34 yard line. And when you look down at this great speed of Jones and Walker, you can imagine that they can really put the Willies into the secondary. Both of them do about nine threes. Jones, of course, a gold medalist on our Olympic relay team in Montreal. It's a good move where he makes his move to his left right here. Yeah, it's a big opening in there. No way they're going to close that gap in there. It is. Smith was the defender that closed it. 34 yard line, first and 10 to Jets. Todd it off to the tight end. Barkham moves and Barkham leveled there, short of the first down by about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Ken Panetti, the middle linebacker, really popped Jerome Barkham. And Jerome very slow getting up. It's astonishing to see him drop some key passes in the Jets' most recent game because he's really got the best hands on the club. Been there for a while, hasn't he? He's like a senior, yep. senior spokesman. Once a wide receiver, as Frank noted earlier. James the tight end back in 75. But they can move him out if they want to. Jackson State. Second down, about a yard and a half. Jones in motion. Here comes Freeman McNeil. Big opening. He cuts uh -huh. back. McNeil and he is into Detroit Lions territory at the 43 yard line. Alvin Hall, the last lion there, made the stop. He got around there in a hurry. They had a good lead block. Coming out in front, Stan Baltimore. Oh, that was nice. Stan White missed him. He is quick, isn't he? That guy can move. And he's strong, Don. He's hard to bring down. No, it takes two men here. Got that Baltimore had a nice hole and lead guard left guard came out the ball you'll find when they use the two tight end offense and run McNeil right he is more effective than running counter play left first down 43 yard line Jet look out and Todd sees the blitz tries to get it quickly out to McNeil and has to hurry it incomplete James Harrell in there defensively on the blitz along with Stan White two outside linebackers coming in on Richard Todd New leader. Herman McNeil with that burst over the right side has regained the lead of the National Football League. Those numbers below McNeil off representing five games played. What a game for Marcus Allen yesterday. Oh, I don't have many more. He may make it. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, he may make it. He's fun to watch, isn't he, Marcus Allen? But a lot of Walker out to the left. Lamb Jones in the backfield. Now in motion. Augustiniak. And Augustiniak goes inside the 40, close to the 38-yard line for a game of about three yards. Augie, Augie. Daniel. Third down and call it seven as they mark the ball at the 39-yard line. The mind power of the lines you were just looking at there. Comes in number 42, Scott Durkee, number 25, setbacks to the Jets. They're fine receivers, better than Augustiniak and McNeil. Uh, Wide open is Harper out of the backfield, and Harper down close to the 20 yard line. Before he's upset there by Jimmy Williams, another first down for the Jets. He did a good job on Jimmy Williams. Jimmy had him, bumped him a little bit, and Bruce was able to use his quickness and cut back away, and he leaves. You see him leave Jimmy Williams number 59 kind of in his track. More often than not, in this kind of situation, you give Hopper an instant opening, he can go all the way. Actually, once he caught the ball, they defense did well. Now McNeil and Augustiniak back in the lineup on the first down and 10. Ball just short of the 21-yard line. McNeil in motion. Watch McNeil. He got he all the off. time in the world, and yet he could not find the open receiver, and a good coverage downfield by Detroit. He attempts over the outstretched arms of Wesley Walker. William Gay finally putting a little pressure on Richard Todd. He had plenty of time to throw. That uh, pressure you see really came, I'd say, around the four-second level, because there was a pretty good defensive coverage down there. 
almost an afterthought. Yeah, I'm part of William Gay. There he is. Second down and 10. 6-14 remaining in the first quarter. Detroit on top, 3 to nothing. The Jets on the roll. And foul up in the backfield. Richard Todd colliding with Freeman McNeil. Looks like Todd was anticipating an inside handoff, and McNeil was taking it outside. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. Or vice versa. <laughs> I could It didn't make any difference. They just went right in the middle. I think Richard did look for that inside move, and McNeil's going to the outside. Richard did a good thing. Wait a minute, let me have the ball. Let's don't fumble that. You see Baker come in there. Make the move. Third down, 13. They show an ability to move the ball, but that's twice they victimized themselves with their own mistake. To tie the oh. find Bruce Harper, and Harper will be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Down near the 14-yard line. Bobby Watkins was there defensively, and we'll see the place kicker for the Jets, Pat Leahy. Crossing type patterns, and they, they are pretty good. You get people going one way or another, and somebody's going to break out. Takes a little bit longer to throw that one. Bruce comes across the middle. A little bit late in closing, but Bobby Watkins is there. So Leahy comes out on fourth down. Five to six on the year, but last week, a couple of missed conversions. He kicked a low line drive field goal that was blocked by Green Bay. Missed it again. Leahy hooks to the left. And he knew it instantly. So three to nothing. The Lions over the Jets. It remains that way. We're about ready to go on with the action. The Jets have now made three mistakes. Missed field goal, mishandled exchange between Todd and McNeil, and McNeil's fumble. So the Lions continue to lead by a score of three to nothing. Gipper? Frank's mic is dead. Pick it up, Howard. All right, Frank's mic is dead for the moment. There's the pitch out to Billy Sims. And they corral Sims before he even gets back to the line of scrimmage, or maybe just does. So, the Detroit Lions enjoying a 3 to nothing edge. And that because of the Jets' failure. Not to overstate the Jets' case. They're responsible for their own mistakes up to this point. We'll try once again. Now he's uh, ready. Frank. Oh, hi, Frank. Had to step out for a moment. Hey, get happened? my monkey wrench, my tape. Happens to everybody. Second down and 11. 19 yard line. All right, Gary. Gary, Gary, Gary. Danielson back. He's out of the pocket. Here comes Gastineau. And Danielson very wisely beats Gastineau to the <laughs> sideline. He escaped with his life, Frank. He's picking up about six yards and doing so. Gatineau's working on what is considered maybe their very best offensive lineman, and that's Keith Dorney. A big, strong guy. And that time Gatineau just got him and looked like they were doing a two-step. They waltzed him right back to Danielson. That's going to be some battle all night. Detroit with a powerhouse front four. Keith Dorney, of course, on the right side. He wears number 70, and it is a good one to keep your eye on. And we'll try and watch it for you. Gatineau with that great quickness. He really is. It's fun to watch Mark play. We see him in superstar competitions, and he just he does things you just can't believe he can do. 265 pounds or something like that. Third down, five. Here comes the blitz. And got to get some. Incomplete. Intended for Freddie Scott. It'll be fourth down, and Detroit will punt. Yeah, got to catch those. They had pretty good uh, protection all across the front line there. Jeff got off the slow start. Sims was upset that he didn't get the football from Danielson. He could have been open, too. He matter. was open. open. Yeah, wide open. But Freddie had that first down already already made that he just held onto the ball. Here's Tom Sladaney. Led the NFC with over 43-yard average a year ago. He can really kick it. We were watching oh, he in the free, free warm-up shooting for that corner angle. He won't be doing it this time, but he's set about 10 of them in between the five and the goal line, and he's got great touch. Bruce Harper has dropped for the Jets. He's inside his own 30-yard line with a lot of respect for Slovenia. This time, it's not so high, and Harper will have an opportunity from the 32-yard line. Uh, Harper 
Walker tripped up, getting out to the 37-yard line where the Jets will have good field position. They trail 3 to nothing with 5.02 remaining in the first quarter. We'll be right back. In the Silverdome, lots of activity. Again, the game not sold out as of yesterday, and it looks like it could have been sold out since. And it suits a little over 80,000 enthusiastic crowd. And the Jets have a first down and 10, the ball at their own 37-yard line. McNeil, 24, Augustiniak, 35, setbacks back in the game for the Jets. And a uh, hit oh, and yeah. go, Wesley yeah. Walker. And he comes down with the ball and then puts his foot out of bounds, but it is complete to the 33-yard line as he did a little turnout right in front of Wayne Smith. Wayne Smith fought, and Wesley Walker was down the sideline. This is a good coordinated punt move by Richard Todd in the backfield and Wesley just turns back around Wayne was closing and he just he missed it if that ball had been a little bit more on the other side it was a touchdown it was a touch that's those ifs and buts 31 yard pickup and a first down for the Jets 23 yard line of Detroit Frank they have so many weapons don't they indeed they do and they have that great speed on the outside McNeil and turns back Right into a linebacker. James Harrell filling in tonight for Gary Cobb, who has a sore leg. Gain of about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Dusty Walker came into tonight's game as the leading jet receiver with 16. Lamb Jones had 11 receptions trouble getting them on the field together a year ago but they have him this season second and nine going for Walker a timing pattern and Wayne Smith would not make let Walker make the out move incomplete that time they had good pressure on Todd good pressure but I remind you coming up next Saturday here on ABC's Wide World of Sports the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship It'll be live from Sacramento, California. It'll be blacked out in Sacramento. The WBC World Super Featherweight Champion, Rafael Bazooka Limon, faces Bobby Chacon for the title, and they have really got it on. They've fought four times. Each one has a victory, each one a loss, and they've had one draw. ABC's Wide World of Sports, 5 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday. Third down and nine for the Jets. Look out. Picard steps inside and yeah. fires it complete. Wesley Walker uh -huh. yeah. puts his head down uh -huh. and pulls inside to the 13. First down, Jets, and the crowd is beginning to rumble. <laughs> the three yards, he looked like Roy Regal. <laughs> hey, it was Richard Todd who made this work. He did. He slipped right by. But when Wesley got the ball, he's expected to be hit right here. Watch him. Wait a minute. Now it is. <laughs> there it is. Let's go back again. <laughs> you hang around, you'll get your head. There's a good move. Richard, he had zero point that was there, and he stepped right up in front of the guy that found the throw. Just down, three to nothing, on the drive again. Augustinia pulling right up the middle. Augie, Augie, down close to the seven-yard line. Fantetti defensively for Detroit. And Mike Augustinia, he was a walk-on at Purdue. He was a walk-on with the Jets. Came into camp a year ago and just took the job. The man can walk, can't he? Strong blocking back. Good team, man. Says he doesn't care how many yards he gets. Freeman McNeil gets 2,000. I've never totally believed people like that. No, but it sounds good. Yeah. Augustiniak pulling close to the goal line. They'll mark it short of the goal line, but it'll be a first down and goal to go. One of the good ways to use Augustinek is just straight like this. Just running right up there. They're doing a little pole mm -hmm. block, a double team in the middle. What a good box by the center, Joe Fields. The Jets really feels an all-pro, and you saw him with a tremendous one-on-one -on -one block. He but, is so great. So is Dan Alexander as you look at Monty Clark. They've got a powerhouse offensive line, the Jets. They look like a bunch of mobile homes out there. They're enormous. Field, a rookie from Iowa State over the left side has not played since the New England game at the start of the season. Hey, those Jets move the ball tonight. 
Nothing fancy. Straight ahead block. Give me a lead to the outside. Turn me loose on the defensive back, and I'm going to score. Well, look at this crunch field. The rookie from Iowa State. Another power. They're loaded with talent. There's no question. He hasn't field. carried the ball over once or twice, has he? he no, did. because of the injury Frank mentioned. He had 10 attempts early in the year, but nothing spectacular. Pat Leahy puts the Jets on top. 7-3. to three. Strong, effective drive. Hitting the wide receivers. Augustiniak up the middle. And the Jets have the lead. Crutchfield took it in from inside the one-yard line for the Jets. They have a 7-3 lead. Once again, the Jets 3-1 on the nine-game season. Detroit is 2-2. Two two. Pat Leahy will kick off with the Jets. And Robbie Martin is back there. There is Robbie Martin. Rick Kane is with him. Right-footed kicker, one would suspect that the normal side windings up. And Robbie Martin, the man the Lions would like to see handle the ball, will get it. Leahy hooks it a little more than he anticipated, and he'll have to do it all over again, only from the 30-yard line. He's going to have to re rework that leg. Yeah, you talk about a man in a slump. And how quickly a kicker can lose confidence. And he missed a couple of extra points. And I think that's got to be one of the things that really bothers him. Michael's disgust registered on his face. You know, Michael doesn't, doesn't hide a whole lot, does he? No. <laughs> He's on the sideline. You can pretty much tell how this man feels about just about anything. You know, I saw the Oilers lose the game to the Giants yesterday. Neither team played prepossessingly. The Oilers lost it in the last seven minutes when Bruna connected twice on big passes to the rookie Wolfolk. But they are tough in the Astrodome. Just ask the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think they'll give us a good game against Dallas next Monday. Going back to Houston. 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 That song, ladies and gentlemen, was taught to Dean Martin by Don Merrill. <laughs> He taught me a lot, Dean did. A lot of it I can't use. Leahy set to kick off once again. Five-yard assessment after the kick going out of bounds. We'll take a look at it from the end zone. Robbie Martin again back there with Rick Kane. Martin 83, Kane 32. And he almost hooks this one out. Here comes Robbie Martin. And Martin buried up around the 28-yard line where for the Detroit Lions. They trail 7-3 with 1.54 remaining here in the first quarter. Gary Danielson trots out. And while the Jets really spread around their offensive strength, well, it was pretty well wrapped up in Billy Sims with the Detroit Lions. We're going to take a timeout, and we'll be back in the Silverdome after this message. I stepped his way into the NFL as 1980's Rookie of the Year by spicing his natural runner's instincts with a dancer's flair. He took charge of games, twisting and squirming on invisible wires, flying through the air as if humans could do such things, and kicking out those quick legs the instant some inner sense tells him he's clear. Watch for him. He'll be appearing soon in end zones all over the league. In the Silver Dome, first down 10, the Detroit Lions led by Gary Danielson tonight. He replaced Eric Hipple, Hipple who had his problems in the first half Thanksgiving Day against the Giants, a game the Lions ultimately lost on a 97-yard interception return by the Giants' Lawrence Taylor. So Danielson, he's had a couple of big years as the quarterback tonight for the Lions, and he fires on first and 10, and let's see, no. That ball trapped by Freddie Scott, it'll be second down and 10. Was a great, great pickup. <laughs> yeah, but that ball, it was not a hard throw, and he was wide open. So that should have been first down there. Gary's got to get his timing back. He had played for a while, and I think it's very important. I, I think it's good, as I said at the top of the show, pick your quarterback and go with him until he just really stinks up the place and then change. But this kid hasn't played much. Second down and 10, 29 yard line of Detroit. quickly in and out of the hands of Ulysses Norris filling in tonight for David Hill. The crowd doesn't like it. It'll be third down and ten, and we'd like to just wish our producer, Bob Goodrich, for many years, who not with us tonight. He is in his home back east with the 
slight case of pneumonia, if there is such a thing as a slight case, and we want to wish him well. I sure hope he's getting better. He made a mistake. He fought, fought it, fought it, had walking pneumonia, insisted on coming out to Anaheim with us from Tampa. That's just like an old boy from, uh, from uh, SNU. They want to give right. you a hard day's work. Fair day's work, fair day's pay. Get Third down and ten. Sanderson again, this time smoking through the hands of Billy Sims. difficult because Danielson really had something on it. Now, the one before, Billy could have caught this one, but the one before should have been caught. That was U.S.C. Norris. This ball's rifled a little bit hot coming across the middle. But that was right ahead to catch it. It was just zinging a little bit too fast when he got there. Meanwhile, the Jets are not getting to him. He's getting good protection against one of the great sacking front fours in the game. And the Jets offensively almost moving the ball at will. They had that fumble on their early possession by Freeman McNeil, and Detroit got three points out of it. But in their second drive, they were hitting the passes. They were breaking off long yardage on the run, and Spladini has almost kicked it out of the stadium. Parker all the way back to his 13-yard line. Good setup there, good block. And Bruce Harper, such a gifted athlete. He can do it all. Good receiver, good runner, good return man, and he gets the Jets out close to the 34-yard line. Possibly going to see a good block here, number 50, Bob Grable, rookie from Notre Dame. As this starts, see it start to set up to the other side. There's a good block. There's Grable. Well, maybe it was two blocks. He pushed one, tackled the other. <laughs> 58-yard punt by Spladani and a 20-yard return. Sometimes you just outkick your coverage. Crable, a number one draft choice. A superb athlete. Also, was a good block. I noticed in the replay there by Ron Crosby. Also, right. Yep, close to their own 34-yard line. The lead 7-3. to three. Ah, Again, finds an open man over the middle. Hits the tight end, Jerome Barkham. Gain of 7 out over the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and 3 see a pattern at this early stage in the game say well, what's this, what are the Jets going to try to do offensively and in my opinion is that they're doing it all they've thrown short ones they've thrown little swings they've run draws they've gone deep they really have found nothing they can do yeah. right they're just doing it all to the goal. Ran the wrong man at the middle. It's not a bad little first first quarter stat, is it? Let's see. <laughs> four times 125. Four times 150. Whoa. Hey, he really, really increased his percentage a year ago. Dropped off to 13 interceptions from 1980 when he had 30. Richard Todd settling down, maturing each and every year. And he's making his 50 seconds in second he starts tonight. To Lamb Jones. Jones has the first down, squirms for more, but goes down at the 46 yard line. And that should expire the first quarter. And there it is. The Jets moving once again, have a 7 to 3 lead. They'll have a first down and 10 at their 46 yard line when we come back. Frank Gifford, Howard Cosell, Don Meredith watching the Jets and the Lions. The Jets moving the ball up and down the field. They have a 7 3 lead as we begin. The second quarter, they have a first down and 10, the ball at their own 46-yard line. Jones in motion. No. Draw to McNeil and Red beautifully. And Teddy, the middle linebacker, stepping inside, and he was there. Get the feeling they caught him in the wrong defense that time. They were closing those gaps, and just don't quite make it. And Teddy was there. Now look at these first quarter stats, which will be coming up in just a second. Not too thrilling for Detroit when they come up, I don't suspect. Here's Fantetti. Wow. Beautiful state. There was a loss of almost three yards. Well, a second down, 13. Ball in the 43-yard line. Comes the blitz, and Todd gets rid of it beautifully. Goodbye. And this Goodbye. is a bye-bye. Wesley Walker with Goodbye. that superb speed. And again, Richard Todd had a man right in his face. It was Fantetti, a blitzing linebacker, and Todd very coolly drilled it out to Wesley Walker. Touchdown. I th think it is Wayne, Wayne Smith. But Frank hit it 
Todd got this ball out there, one on one. This little move right here. Wayne Smith played it too far to the outside, trying to use that, got to use that sideline son as a friend. Hey, he hardly even touched it. Walker. He really did. <laughs> Wesley came back to the inside. Wayne was out of position. Wesley made a cardinal mistake. He made it twice. He turned around and looked at Smith <laughs> chasing him. <laughs> Never do that. That was a good, good move on Todd's Todd part. A good linebacker. Leahy can breathe a little easier. He gets the conversion to the upright. And the Jets on top, 14 to 3, early here in the second quarter. The Jets now leading 14 to 3. That took place in the first quarter. And look at those first quarter stats. I've mentioned that we'd be showing them a few seconds ago. Now we can. The Jets first down edge, passing yardage, total yardage, total domination. Pat Leahy to kick off. Rick Kane, 32. Robbie Martin, 83. Deep for Detroit. Leahy. Robbie Martin from the three yard line. the 17 yard line drilled back to the 16 and let's go back and watch Richard Todd's pass to Wesley Walker coming right straight up the middle is John Woodring uh, no it wouldn't be John Woodring because he plays the other Fantetti. side oh, Fantetti and nobody picked him up that was a good job that Richard did standing his ground knowing where the receiver is and get that ball off Fantetti was right in the middle nobody picked him up there you go Wesley there you go West not a bad average recently married I read about that. You know, he's I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. he's legally blind in the left eye, which I find somewhat amazing. First and ten, and this is Billy Sims. Got a big flag, and the flag goes down. Yeah, got that one pretty big. Amos Fowler. Clip, wasn't it? But he clipped it pretty good. He hit him in the back. Sims got a couple out of it. You know, the court for Reed tonight is Chuck Heberling. That's basically see Detroit as a running and they've utilized Billy, but you'll see him coming around over here, and then right there in the middle, Malau. Whammo, Amos Fowler. The center coming out. He got out there in a hurry, didn't he? He mm -hmm. was in great shape, but he came up with the clip. Maybe he should have gotten out there a little quicker, or a little later. I mean. But, Amos, you keep out there going for him. Illegal block above the weight from behind, number 65. First down. Now all the way back, close to the eight-yard line for Detroit. Billy Whoa. Sims, and he is hammered right at the line of scrimmage. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Abdul Salam. Abdul was there, wasn't he? Abdul Salam and Marty Lyons, those tackles on that 4-3. They play the run so strong that Gastineau and Neal and then Flacco is healthy can just turn it loose anticipating that. Abdel Salam is so deceptively strong. He was a boxer, Don. Had 19 bouts in space. In space, was it? Mm-hmm. Soldier of peace, Abdel Salam means. Second down, 19. From the nine-yard line. Dexter Bussey. And Bussey gets out over the 15. Short of the original line of scrimmage. Now mark it at the 16. Salam again. Defensively there for the Jets in pursuit. You're talking about his boxing background. I was reading an article and, and talking about the sacks, the number of sacks. And when the rules change where the offensive linemen can get their hands out, the technique for rushing the passer has changed. And they credit a lot of that to people that are, can use their hands and get their hands inside first. And that could be a plus for he. And then Cleco also was a fighter, wasn't he? In, back in college, I think so. Cleco is frightening just to look at. Third down and 11. Gaston. Well, Anderson looking for a first down receiver. And Danielson up close to a first down. I think he got it. He was not getting help from Freddie Scott, who was coming across the field with his hands out raised, but he was short of the first down. So Danielson got it on his own, and Greg Puddle stays on the carpet for the Jets. the training staff. Big puddle. Watch again now. Don, 
Danielson had Freddie Scott open, but Freddie Scott wasn't thinking first down, and Danielson was. Gastino was in there and overran him. Good effort on Danielson's part. Battle is on his feet, leaving the game, and we're going to take a timeout right now. Land on that tackle of Danielson, in which Danielson picked up the first down, shaken up, wind knocked from him. Looks to be ready to come back in the game. At the moment, though, is Bob Crable, a rookie first-round draft pick out of Notre Dame. He wears number 50. Billy Sims, whacks over on the left side. Good, strong defensive play by Kenny Neal and Marty Lyons over there on the right side. You know, Buttle isn't going to want to stay in the side. He's coming in right now, in fact. He doesn't want to give Grable a chance to play. He knows how good an athlete Grable is. And the linebacking core that the Jets have of Buttle, Blinka, and, of course, Lance Mel, two of the three from Penn State, is much like their linebacking core in their Super Bowl year. Frank, second down and eight. The ball just over the 30-yard line. Danielson under pressure again, and... Going for the interception was Bobby Jackson. Went through his hands, but Mark Nichols, second-year man out of San Jose State, that Detroit is very high on, good athlete, yeah. wide receivers. He could not hold on. Yeah, it went through Nichols' hands, too, after he got there. Another shot at it. Jackson had touchdown in his eyes with this one much. Well, he had Abdul Salam right there looking at him. Jackson did have his eye on it. It goes through his hands, then it's Mark Nichols. The Lions primarily appear to be running a running team, and you'd think so with a guy like Sam back there, but you've got to mix it up a little bit. These receivers, we haven't heard from too much of them. They're young, but they're, they've got a lot to learn. Third down and eight. Quick count by Danielson. There's a good move. Fires, and it's complete to Tracy Porter. And Porter has the first down and rides out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Crowd fires up, and Detroit shows a little bit of light. I think a flag goes up over there, Frank. They may have called yeah, first Holmes. no foul against the Jets on Jerry Holmes. Could have been. Very similar time play that we saw the Jets throw to Wesley Walker. This time, Tracy Porter comes back. The Jets had linebackers coming at Danielson. He did a good job, held his ground. Now let's see what happened on the sideline. He's out, and that's going to cost him some more yardage right there. Just a little aggressive. Jerry Holmes. And here comes the flag, personal foul, and they'll mark it off against the Jets down at the 36-yard line. So the Lions got something going. Chance now to tighten this ball game. They trail 14 to 3. Unnecessary roughness, defense, number 47, first down. Jerry Holmes. All 6'2", 175 pounds of him. Dumping Tracy Porter, a little severely on the sideline. First down, Danielson back again. Gets it out to Bussey, and Bussey does not hold on. Just as Danielson again felt pressure. Just as well he didn't, Frank, because Kenny Troy had read the play perfectly. Gary Danielson was under pressure, and he could have... He located Freddie Scott. Freddie Scott was going right for the crossbars, wasn't he? That's one of those, pardon me, a little deceptive, though, because Jerry Holmes stopped going with him when the play had already been begun on the other side. Good eye. Second down, 10. Quick count again by Danielson. And this one will be picked off. Watch out. That's Darrell Ray, and he is some runner. Former wishbone quarterback. Out to the 43-yard line, but he gets his hands on the interception. He is dangerous. That's his 16th interception in two years and five games now. This ball was just not thrown well. He didn't see Ray come across from his uh, safety position. Got a little bit of pressure back there, but not a well-thrown ball. Here's one of your fine defensive backs in this league today, Darrell Ray. He's all pro quality. You ask Ray Perkins, giant coach, about Ray. First and ten, the Jets. And they have been hot. They have the ball at their own 43-yard line. Offensively, they have done just about anything they wanted to do. Jones in motion. Freeman McNeil. Darting and splashing and using a slim down, 215 pounds, to get to midfield. Notice whenever they slant McNeil, mildly right, he gets yarded. All right. Gain of 
seven. It'll be second down and three. Now, that's an interesting stat. That's hard to believe. No NFL rushing champion has ever played on a team that reached the Super Bowl. They had reached yeah, but the Thursday Bowl. night, we showed that no NFL passing champion has ever reached the Super Bowl. What are they telling us? Mediocrity gets to the Super Bowl? Either that or don't run in play. Maybe the kicking game wins. <laughs> second down, three. Augustiniak. I believe he'll have the first down close to the 42-yard line. Augustiniak at about 225. McNeil, who played at 225 a year ago, is down to about 215, 217 this year. Much quicker, he feels. And we will have a measurement. That's Marty Lyon. Next to him, Al Abdul Salam. Temperature at game time, as it always is here in the Silver Dome, some 60 to 65 degrees outside, 35 degrees and dropping quickly, getting chilly. First and 10, the Jets. 9.59 remaining in the first half, 14 to 3, the Jets have the lead. The American Conference, Pittsburgh, Miami, the LA Raiders, and Cincinnati are all 4-1. The Jets trying to stay with them. McNeil following Augustiniak. Look at McNeil just doing this on his own. Taken out of bounds inside the 42-yard line for a gain of about five. And then he does what you're supposed to do that middle linebacker position. He covers a lot of ground. He got out to the outside but couldn't bring McNeil down. Just good effort. You've got to remember that McNeil was the third choice this year in the entire draft. Preceded only by Lawrence Taylor and Taylor preceded by Johnny Rogers. Look at this. That's not bad. That's the middle linebacker I was slipping there. Had a pretty good lead block. I think that was August Augustiniak that was there early. Yeah. Inside the 42, second down and five. Six. Going deep is Walker. Right there. Wesley Walker uh -huh. just uh -huh. blowing by uh -huh. Wayne Smith. He has a great speed and as Richard Todd was absolutely dead letter perfect. That's uh -huh. Wayne. Wayne just, Smith. He just beat that kid so easily. It was sad to say. He just blowed past him. You can see that one coming along. Here he goes. Nothing really fancy. He says, well, wait a minute. You let me get too close to you. I'll just slide on by. The ball is beautifully thrown. Isn't it? Right in there. Yes, sir. That's two against Wayne Smith now. There might be more. <laughs> Wesley Walker, he has a great speed. Somewhere down around 9-4. Of course, they're not hurting on the other side when they go with Lamb Jones. Yeah. Play heat. Jets are hot tonight. They have a 21-3 lead with 9-30 remaining in the first half. The natives in Detroit are getting restless. Numbers for Wesley Walker. He has been really effective against these lines. Played against them once before. Had a big afternoon. See his little earring there. I can't believe the guy can't see out of his left eye. He caught that touchdown pass over Looking his left, over shoulder. His left shoulder. Amazing. From birth, and uh, you, I guess, adapt to that. Pat Leahy to kick off. Booming kick. Goes into the end zone, and Rick Kane will stay there. A touchback, and Detroit will try again from their 20-yard line. You know, as I look at that matchup for the national title in the Sugar Bowl, I'm giving you there are so many Penn Staters on this Jets team. They like them, don't they? Oh, they love them. The coach. The linebacker coach is Ralph Baker, Penn State Jets Super Bowl team. They have three linebackers from Penn State, but oh, Lance Mel, who's a Super Bowl player, and Ron Crosby, and then they've got Mickey Shula, the great blocking, sure-handed tight end who backs up Boston. And that Georgia Penn State game is going to be a good one. That'll be fun to watch. First down and 10, Danielson. Good catch, Freddie Scott comes down with it. Inside the 35 for the first and 10 for Detroit. Freddie Scott can beat the other team on mentality alone. Graduate of Amherst. Well, they don't have any SMU grads out there, so maybe he is top man on the field. I don't know. The SMU guys are really sharp. You know, you're serious. I absolutely am. <laughs> Clark just inside the 30-yard line where it'll be first down and 10. Exclusively. <laughs> Gets 
at six yards. It'll be second down and four. Oh, Maxi Baum, you saw there, their defensive coordinator. All right. Billy Sam. Coming in there high. Awfully close. All the folks in Hooks, Texas are pulling for Billy Knight. I know that. Winkle is a little high on John Jefferson, you'll remember. I do remember. Second down and four, Sam. Stays on his feet. Turns a loss into a gain of about a yard. It'll still be third down and two. Abdul Salam tripping up Sim. It was Monty Clark's aim to run on the Jets. Surely what he's learning is very hard to do. Look at the differential in total yards. And the Lions are trailing not that good a passing team, either from the point of view of quarterback or receivers. So if you can't run on them, you're in deep trouble. Three wide receivers now for Detroit. The tight end Norris out. Tracy Porter is in. Ten is back for a pass. Uh, Lion of scrimmage, and that's it. It'll be fourth down. Marty Lyon hustling there defensively from his interior line position, <laughs> making the stop on Sim. And the fans here in the Silver Dome letting the home team know they didn't particularly like that call. I assume this is the way it's designed. The ball's thrown a little bit too quick, in my opinion, because Billy was so deep. He held this that was designed that way. They ought to redesign it. Yeah, they got to redesign that one. Gave Take it that thing up backwards. You get all the pursuit in the world on it. That was Lance Mel, 56, one of those Penn Staters. Just a terrific ball player. Yeah, he's the guy that's never here. Greatly really resembles Baker, Atkinson, and Grant from the linebacking trio of the Jets Super Bowl team in 68. He's the leading tackler on his team and was a year ago. Yep. Spadini waits till his hunting team adjusts, gets it off, and Bruce Harper has to let it bounce. And it starts to take a jet bounce, and it's killed at the 22-yard line by Steve Doig, hustling down there for Detroit. The Jets will have first down and 10 at their own 23. 35-yard kick. Yep, that tells the story about my colleague already in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The gift scored the 78th and last TD of his NFL career on an 11-yard pass from Gary Wood. But did the man from USA make the lad from Cornell feel like a big leaguer? But the but Giants lost. No. 20 to 21. And it wasn't your fault, Frank. First down and 10, the Jets. Should be holding, and out of the backfield is Freeman McNeil. Good move, and McNeil jukes and works his way to the 32, short of the first down. But again, that flag is right in there where it would indicate it would be a call against the Jets holding. Well, if the Jets can make enough mistakes, maybe Detroit can somehow get reasonably into this ball game. Anyway, as we were looking at that graphic a while ago, I'd like to also remind those of you who do not know my other colleague on Howard's right, Don Meredith, goes into the Collegiate Hall of Fame tomorrow night at New York's Big Gala. How about that? Congratulations, Cowboy. And it's it's about time. Offense, <laughs> number 60, first time. There never is a right time. Dan Alexander working principally against William Gay. Guilty of holding for the Jets, and they have moved it back inside the 14-yard line. the middle. Augustiniak. That's a couple of yards. Isn't our old friend Babe Pirelli going in with you? Yes, I think that's right. Vito Babe Pirelli. Kentucky. Nice man. And used to work as a coach here with his death. Certainly did, and as a backup quarterback to name it. Congratulations thank again, my friend. Thank you, thank you very much. A lot of ponies coming up from the Southwest. They tribute to Dallas. Uh, good time. Second down, 17. He's back. Augustiniak. It's back to the, close to the original line of scrimmage, where it'll be third down and, well, third down and about 11. Stan White defensively there, along with Wayne Smith for Detroit. You must admit, Frank, Todd has the look of an assured quarterback now, one who's arrived. Much more confident than he was in his early years. I mentioned 1980. 
hung it up there for 30 interceptions. I think that led the league and last year. And one of the guys principally responsible for it has been Joey Walton. He's brought in kind of a control type of offense. And Richard does have much more confidence. Doesn't throw that bomb as frequently as he used to. Right out there. Now Scott Durkin. No place to go. He had Barkham down the middle that time. Short of the first down, and the Jets will have to punt. Look at that Durkin kid. He's another lad from Purdue like Augustiniak. And they're cut of the same mold. Excellent blockers. Good plugging runners. Valuable men. Chuck Ramsey and the Jets. First punt of the night. Robbie Martin. Strouk back for Detroit. Positions himself at the 30-yard line. Ramsey, beautiful high towering kick that takes Martin back to the 20 yard line. And he goes down there at the 28 yard line. It'll be first and 10 Detroit. Boy, the pack is back in the rain and mud of Milwaukee County Stadium yesterday against the Bills. They rolled up 33 points against Chuck Knox. That's a lot of rolling right there. In the third quarter, 13 to 7, to Dick Dickens, the handoff, and then the reverse to James Lofton, the very play Lofton worked for a touchdown against the Giants, the second game of the season, and bang, down to the three yard line, set up the TD, 20 to 7, Green Bay. In the fourth quarter, Glenn Dickey again, and number 87, John Thompson, touchdown, and Green Bay won it 33 to 21. Here's the action, Frank. 59 yard punt by Ramsey. First and 10 Detroit. 27 yard line. Danielson in trouble. And Danielson down the sidelines with a pickup of about seven yards. Wasn't the sack, but that's a lot of pressure back there. He never really had a shot set up and uh, look for his man. I think Mark may be the first one that comes in, but actually the Gastineau we here. See him get those hands inside. That's what I was talking about. The fighters. He got his hands inside, made a move. Marty Lyons had him. Good roll to the outside. Marty did have a good shot at him. There's our boot. Danielson gets seven. It'll be second down and three. The ball just over the 35-yard line. 425 remaining in the half. The Jets on top. 21 to three. Bootleg over to the left side. Danielson will get the first down easily. Tacks on additional yardage. He dropped the ball over the 45, and he left the ball there in the... Well, he marked it down. Ball bounding out of bounds. You get a fast... He breathed a sigh of relief. This was designed as a quarterback run. He's not really looking for a receiver. He's trying to get his... Uh, I'm well position. His ball is flying with the block. Ball's on the inside. I think he fumbled that ball. He certainly he did. Has. He certainly did. Mel recovered. Blinka executed the hit. Yeah, he should have kept that ball either to the outside or tucked it in a little bit better. Mistaken call. 46-yard line, first and 10, Detroit. Good call. Nichols and Nichols holds on to the first down of the 41-yard line. The second-year man out of San Jose State. He does give you know, a holding call on Dorney this time, but I'll tell you, Matchup. I happen to be watching he and Gastineau, and they've been going at each other all night. Mark Gastineau and Keith Darty. And I'm telling you, they got it hooked up. They got Darty that time for holding. 13 yard pickup and a first down negated. All right, you see Mark come off the line of scrimmage. His hands are in the inside looking for some jerseys, something. To... <laughs> He's got those hands working in there. <laughs> But I tell you, that is, that's awfully tough. You realize how big and strong those Holding guys are. Offense number 70, first time. They caught him. And they backed him up 10 yards. <laughs> and Dorney is one of the best in the business, I might add, too. He's got his hands full tonight. Another Penn State fellow you're talking about. Only this time for the Lions. to 37, still first down. Danielson again. Based out of the pocket, gets it to Billy Sims. Uh-oh. And Billy Sims just exposed down there to the 49-yard line. You know what? That was Stan Blinka again. And I'm telling you, Blinka hit him in the head. That's right. I what? thought it was a pain 
That is unbelievable. That guy's got to stop that. I thought it was another base. Number 54 out to the outside. That time, Dorney pushed Gastineau to the inside. Coming out here on the outside, they got Buttle out beautifully. Look at 54. I'll be yep. oh, gone, guys. You got to knock that off. That's stupid. And a second down and five. There's no Texas boy, too. They got to talk to him. Gastineau is there. Danielson slips Gastineau, but he does not slip away from Kenny Neal. <laughs> Gastineau simulating the crowd with a, a little kind of a war hoop and leaping up into the air. I think Gastineau's beginning to wear down Dorney. He's getting in there more and more often now. Harold, I've been watching just the defensive lines in general, and the Jets are off the ball so much quicker, defensive lines, than say the Lions defense and that's what they're doing they really put a lot of pressure on them out there and Mark Corson is outside it's getting a lot of help from those guys in the middle too you push it into the inside and it's get a little help out there with your friends lost to five third down 15 look how quick those guys are off that line and deflected the attempt to Mark Nichols and Lance Nell was back there the man who just quietly does one of the finest jobs around in linebacking. You know, Mel was telling me today, I get along much better with Paterno now. At college, he always thought I was jaking it. <laughs> Bruce Harper has dropped for the Jets. Tom Sladeni looks it over, rolls those eyes around. Defensively, Ken Calicut. It'll be first down 10. The Jets at their 19-yard line. Let's take a look at what happened in the Superdome in New Orleans yesterday. We pick up third quarter action with the Saints leading the Bucks 7-3. There's Doug Williams having a much better day than he had when we saw him. Going deep downfield to number 89, Kevin House, the fleet-footed one from Southern Illinois. Touchdown, 10-7 Tampa Bay. Now, 40 seconds remaining. Tampa Bay leading 13 to 10. This attempted field goal at the distance, but was wide. It would have been a 60-yard game-tying field goal. But the Bucks won it, 13-10. They're bringing the punt back. There was a flag down at the line of scrimmage. It would indicate I feel quite certain that there was an illegal man downfield. And the Jets, with Harper running backwards, losing a few yards, he thought they want. Detroit to kick it again. It's not one of Spadini's better kicks, however. It didn't turn over, as you mentioned. He's capable of kicking that thing straight out of the... the illegal man downfield on the kick. Number 55 offense. Fourth down. Tom Kinnear got down there a little early. Spadini will have another opportunity. That kick was 40 yards. The one prior to that kick, 58 yards. This one end over end, and Harper takes it at the 25. Good move, Harper. Look out. And Good move, Spadini. It was Spadini that made the save. And he heard it. Harper found a little gap, and he just exploded through it, and Spadini is shaken up. That's not the role he ordinarily plays. Hardly any of those kickers wear hip pads. And I don't think he has any on it. He either got stepped on. He made a good tackle. Harper makes a great cut right here. Getting some pressure. That Ken just watch that gun. If he didn't run into his own man right there, he might have gone all the way. No, he didn't get stepped on. He just fell on it. Fell on his hip. That was a good effort by Sladen. I think it really is. He wrapped him up, and he got pushed. And he and Harper both landed right on his rear end. He didn't have any hip pads. It's going to hurt out there. 23 yard return out there the 48 yard line two minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the first half the Jets looking for victory number four they lost their opener to Miami 45 28 they have ripped off three straight kills the defense. They really have a hard time doing that. Heading for the two-minute warning. We'll look at it again and 
Defense is dropping way back, flipping off to the back, easy pass. Now he picks up his first down. That's what Augustiniak can do the best. Just put the head down and bull for the yardage, and he gets the first down. Two-minute warning. The Jets will have a first and 10 at the 39 of Detroit when we come back. <laughs> That's a nice work, not just with two minutes to go in the first half. What is not on there, he has completed the last eight in a row. First down inside the 39-yard line for the Jets. Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan. Jets in total control. God, another completion. Lamb Jones. Now beats our boy. Oh, here's some speed. Now beats our Lamb Jones to the 10-yard line. Inside the 10, it'll be first down. Goal to go. They're just so many big holes back in that second there. They've got them a little gunshot. They beat them deep. Lamb goes back out. They're trying to get in the kind of a zone coverage, but there's nobody there. Lamb looks around. So there's somebody got to go to play. Watch this. And Teddy misses him once. Gets back up. Comes back again. Doug English is chasing, and that's good hustle on that middle linebacker position. First down. Goal to go. Just have three timeouts. Heading to one minute remaining here in the second half. Rather, the first half. Complete, Gary Gaffney. Gain of a couple of yards is all, but he keeps the string of completions alive. They have so many receivers. Gaffney may be the glue-fingered one of the wide receivers, counting Barkham as the tight end. Gaffney and Jones alternate and bringing in the plays from Joe Walton. And look at that. That's Gaffney. Now, yesterday, a new quarterback was unfurled again, and he is doing very well. Let's go to Soldier Field, Chicago, Illinois. The Pats against the Bears. First quarter action. Jim McMahon, BYU, rookie. And he had a sensational day. Going there to Kenny Margram out of Stanford. 7-0 Bears. Bears rolled to a 23-6 lead. Then in the third quarter, McMahon threw this. The interception by Rick Sanford, number 25. He goes 99 yards. A New England club record, the touchdown, 23-13. Bears, who went on to win it, 26-13. And apart from their letdown against the Vikes, who crushed them 35-7, the Bears look like a team that can trouble others. The Jets on a roll. Richard Todd now 10 consecutive completions, having just a great night. Went over the bench and had a word with Walt Michaels and the man who's calling these plays, Joey Walton, former teammate of mine, who, by the way, is allowing his little 10-year-old son to stay up at home and watch this game tonight. It's little Joe Jr.'s birthday. Happy birthday, Joe. Second down, goal to go. I think James Hunter got a hand in there to get Wesley Walker to knock it away. This ball was dropped right in the well. Wesley's out to the outside. I think you're right, Hunter. The ball was well thrown. Good match. Timing to play. In. Perfect. Yeah, right in there. They watch Hunter's hand. Comes back down. There yes, he did. did. There he comes. He he good effort out of his part hand. of Hunter. And a third down goal to go. Gaffney comes in. Gaffney with excellent hand. Good down in this territory. He can catch the ball thrown low. Jerome Barker also works well down in close. Walker. Gaffney slip to the left. And Richard Todd had to hurry that pass. The blitz was on. Stan White was in there. Oldham had Gaffney covered. Dan White is right in Todd's face. He winds up sitting in there talking to Joe Fields. You see Joe come out the center, makes a good block on Stan. He just leaps over him, hit Todd anyway. He's sitting there with Joe. How'd that guy get here? Well, he's quick. For the Lions. With a first down goal to go at the nine yard line. Stiffen, and out comes Pat Lee. He put the trail back in it, didn't he? And once again, Leahy puts the hook on it. And Leahy is unbelievably bad. We'll be back with more action right after this message from the National Football League. Stay with us. 35 seconds remaining in the first half. 
been brought to you as a public servant by the National Football League and, of course, the Lions' Tom Spladini. This is Leahy. A moment ago, as he missed that chip shot, you think putters and kickers don't suffer? He's obviously lost all his confidence. Hey, they come over to the bench after these guys have been banging around out there, and they, they don't get many smiles. 25 seconds remaining in the first half. First contained the Lions. We're on 20-yard line. The Jets on top, 21 to 3, and a flag is down. Screen to Sim. Great running. What a run. I oh. saw a flag in there, too. Oh, they did. Flag is down. Back at the line of scrimmage. And there's one down here, too. They hit Billy after he's already on the ground, right? Well, the Jets were offside. That'll be declined. Barry Bennett will be declined, and they'll pick up some more yards at the end of this run. Then it comes in and gets one of your passing situations. Not one of your starters. You got a little bit over anxious that time. Larry Bennett was the third round draft choice of the Saints. Never made it there. First of foul. It'll be marked off against the Jets. So a little premature move by Bennett. Danielson rolls out. Screen set up pretty well. Got his guards. This is just Bennett. great instinctive running here. Yep. Just sensing where everyone is. Good. That's not explain that move. Kurt Springs. Kirk Springs, late hit against Billy Sims. And while the Jets are dominating, they lead 21 to 3. If the Lions could put something on the scoreboard, they could feel a little better going in at halftime with just 24 seconds now remaining. Danielson. Almost picked off. Mark Nichols dueling Jerry Holmes for the football. No timing in that pattern at all. It's a rollout, kind of a hully gully, hoping they'll find somebody in some of those holes or seams down there. Could have been a lot worse, Frank. Lane missing two chippy field goals. Could have been 27 to 3. Gee, that shows you how ineffective the Lions have been offensively. Don't sustain drives too well. Nope. <laughs> Second down and 10. 43-yard line. Danielson, a lot of time, no receiver, and he works his way to about the 38-yard line where timeout is called quickly. A gain of about six yards. It'll be third down and four. And Danielson will move over and talk it over with Monty Clark and, of course, offensive coordinator Ted Marchaputa. Bad news for the Jets. We're advised that Darrell Ray, the great free safety, has an Achilles problem and won't be back in the game. And that kind of problem could keep him out for a number of weeks. Let's talk about that Sugar Bowl game again for the national championship, Don. Number one, it's in a great city. Yes, I love New Orleans. Right. And number two, it's Herschel Walker. And who may be the greatest number running back. Number three is Herschel Walker, and number four is it's Herschel a, Walker. May be the greatest running back ever to come out of college football. You know, it's the first time I've ever really heard that debate being weighed so widely. Everyone asking, is Herschel Walker the best running back you've ever seen? Uh -huh. He's certainly one of the greats of all time. But when you start comparing somebody like that to a Jimmy Brown, you have to add in a little factor called durability. You just saw Darrell Ray, who, as we noted, will not be back in the game. The one-time quarterback at Oklahoma. I like that Penn State entire ball club. Oh, they, that's terrific. They, they've, got, they've got it together. That's going to be really an exciting football. That kid, Blackledge, is a remarkable kid. Warner? Yeah. Ball. Nine seconds now remaining in the half. Third down and four. Tough call for Detroit. Take a look at it again. Halftime is over. Great pressure. It's coming from everywhere. Marty Lyons first. Gastineau was there. Kenny Neal. And then Kenny Neal. That's 
the end of the first half, 21 to 3. The Jets over the Lions. We'll be back with our halftime highlights in a moment. Back in the Silver Dome, Pontiac, Michigan. The halftime score here is Jets 21, the Lions 3. Tonight's halftime features are being brought to you by Merrill Lynch, whose ability to guide you through the intricacies of investing makes them a breed of boss. Be back with the halftime highlights in a moment. And now the halftime highlights beginning with the Chiefs against the Steelers at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The most productive quarterback of our time, Terry Bradshaw, having a brilliant day. This evidence, Pittsburgh leading 7-0 in the first quarter. Deep downfield to Stallworth, number 82. Touchdown. How many times have you seen it before? 14-0 Steelers. In the second quarter, the Steelers had up their lead to 21 to nothing and Bradshaw at work again this time to the underrated number 86 Jim Smith finally downed on the three yard line that set up Pittsburgh's third TD the steal is led 28 to 7 at halftime and then at the very end this typical of the day Jack Lambert stacking Steve Fuller, and it was the eighth Steelers sack of the game. Lampert third, the Steelers won it. Then at Baltimore Memorial Stadium, the Bengals facing a letdown after their victory over the Raiders against the Colts, but Kenny Anderson saved them with those brilliant stats on the day. In the first quarter, nothing, nothing. Rookie quarterback Mike Pagel finding number 80, Ray Butler. Touchdown, and incredibly, the winless Colts led seven to nothing. But in the second quarter, it would be Kenny Anderson about to go to work again. And he would go to number 86, a kid who suddenly became known last year, out of Lehigh, Steve Kreider. And watch him get up, which he had every right to do. In for the touchdown, it became 7-6 Baltimore. The conversion was not executed. In the fourth quarter, the Bengals had taken a 13-10 lead. And once again, it was the great veteran from Little Augustana, Kenny Anderson, hitting number 83, M.L. Harris, his second touchdown of the day. And so the Bengals led it 20-10. Mike Pagel passing later to number 81. Pat Beach, the Colts touchdown, 20 to 17. Then, with but 10 seconds remaining, number 16, Mike Wood, would attempt a 40-yard field goal. Watch it there. The field goal failed, and Cincinnati had rested the victory. A tough one, 20 to 17. At Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, the Seahawks against the Raiders. The Raiders started behind Marcus Allen, who had an extraordinary day. 24 rushes, 156 yards. This in evidence. The score, nothing, nothing. And Marcus Allen going 33 yards to set up the game's first touchdown, which made it 7 to nothing Raiders. In the second quarter, the Raiders had built their lead to 21 nothing, And Plunkett gave it to Marcus Allen again, the former Heisman Trophy winner. Out of USC, 53 yards to set up his second touchdown of the day. This is a truly remarkable rookie. One of the greats already in the NFL. Let me to 28 nothing Raiders in the fourth quarter. The Seahawks fighting back, trail 28 to 13. And Jim Zorn throwing to the former Colt, Roger Carr. 23 yards, touchdown 28-20. It became 28-23, and the Seahawks wouldn't quit. Two minutes remaining. Zorn again to Roger Carr, number 87. Great catch. He was downed on the rate of 30, finally. And then Zorn would try to win the game spectacularly with this pass. But there was a former Jet in the way. Number 44, Burgess Owen with the interception. The Raiders hung on 28-23. 
Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. The Oilers against the Giants. First quarter action. The hero on the day, Butch Wolfolk, the remarkable rookie from Michigan. Three to nothing Giants. Nielsen in for the temporarily injured Archie Manning. Touchdown pass to Gary Allen, and it was seven to three Oilers. They built that lead to 14 to three. And we pick up with fourth quarter action. Little more than seven minutes remaining. Scott Bruner with a good day. The stats show it going to work. And of course, to Butch Wolfolk. This pass play, good for 26 yards to the two-yard line, setting up the Giants' first TD. The Oilers led it 14 to 10. The Giants then held and got the ball back after only one first down by the Oilers and Bruner to work again. Again to Butch Wolfolk. Look at this catch. A remarkable spinning one-handed catch. Touchdown. The Giants led 17 to 14. There was still two minutes to go. And that stout giant defense went to work. This sack by Lawrence Taylor. The third consecutive sack by the Giants. And so the Giants held on for a 17 to 14 victory. Then at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., the then unbeaten Redskins went against the Cowboys. Nothing, nothing. Second quarter. Danny White having a simply great day. Hitting Ron Springs, touchdown, seven to nothing Dallas. In the third quarter, it was 10 to nothing Dallas. And Danny White would go to work again. This time to Timmy Newsom, number 30, the young man from Winston-Salem. In for the touchdown, 17 to nothing Dallas. In the fourth quarter, it had become 17 to three. Joey Seitz had a good day, having a tremendous year and so is a fellow named charlie brown wearing number 87 touchdown 17 to 10 and it appeared that the redskins might come back but with only two minutes remaining white again the handoff to number 20 runs spring plant left big hole this guy was a track man at ohio state touchdown 46 yards dallas won it 24 to 10. the dallas team now on its customary roll and next monday night in the astrodome where the oilers are always tough at the steelers it's the you get the action underway here in the second half score 21 to 3 at halftime as abc sports exclusive is being brought to you by miller highlights the best beer for the best time of the day welcome to miller time and by dotson who invites you to test drive the exciting new nissan pulsar nx at your dotson dealers both teams coming back out onto the field and we'll be back with more action after this message from our station we have a few moments to show you the scoring as it took place trailing three to nothing the jets sent their rookie Dwayne Crutchfield over the left side the rookie from Iowa State gets in to make it 7-3 the Jets over the Lions and what a first half Richard Todd had 17 of 22 two touchdowns 287 yards and this was one of them Wesley Walker will be the receiver as Todd looks Fantetti the middle linebacker in the face very coolly gets it to Wesley Walker who eludes Wayne Smith and races into the end zone and while Todd was having a great day so too was the speedster the veteran from the University of California. It is again, Todd. And this time, Wesley Walker just blowing by Wayne Smith, who had himself a very busy first half. They make it 21 to three. And, but for a couple of missed chip shot field goals, it could well be 27 to three. These are the first quarter stats, overwhelmingly on the side of the Jets. And now with the flip, it becomes even more overwhelming. 82 yards passing to 85. The total yardage 341 to 144. And Richard Todd, who had his best day ever back in 1980, a 447-yard effort against San Francisco, is well on the way to getting those kind of numbers tonight. Pat Leahy kicks off, and Robbie Martin is deep for Detroit, takes it at the goal line. And just hammered to the turf down there was John Woodring. So Detroit will have possession first. And their 
offense has been handled very well by the Jets defense tonight. They have, of course, the dangerous Billy Sims. But it has been all the Jets thus far. However, they only trail, I mean, only lead 21 to 3. It could have been much more. Great play by a defensive back Hunter. Cost the Jets a touchdown. Lane is too easy field goal. Dexter Bussey, 24. Billy Sims, 20. Those are your setbacks. Gary Danielson remains the quarterback. Danielson, Billy Sims in and out of his hands, incomplete. Well, he's disgusted with himself. Any series of downs is a, can be a, a crucial series of downs, but I think particularly when you go into the halftime, come back out, you see what the teams did. Tim comes out a little drop-off pass. Billy, we've seen drop a couple of nights. He doesn't usually do that. In Danielson's defense, he's had a lot better help. I mean, he's had a lot less help than Todd has on his side. I mean, oh, somebody's got to catch. Second down and 10. The battle continues to wage between Dorney of the Lions, Gaston over the Jets. There they are, 99. Oh, and, look and this it. time, down goes Danielson. It was Kenny Neal who slipped by Baldesweiler. I tell you, he didn't slip by him. He blew by him. He was right in the middle of it, wasn't it? I was watching Gaston. Oh, and Gaston was pretty well contained. And all of a sudden, here comes Neal. And he just zipped right in. It's awfully hard. Man, they're doing a good job. Put that pressure back there. Neal, of course, the defensive end. Marty Lyons on the inside. That time they reversed it. Lyons taken to the outside. Neal coming inside. The sack. And all the way back to the 11 yard line, the Lions. Third down and 19. Leonard Thompson in the game, now number 39, a wide receiver. Again, pressure on Danielson on the screen, and Billy Sims drops this one. Now they dog off. They're looking to be hit. The Jets are hitting so hard that it's impairing the guys mentally, the Lions. It's obviously lack of concentration there, and it, this is, you know, that's what we saw them do the first half. You see, Danielson come off. He's under a little pressure here because they say, okay, it's your job. I don't expect to see Monty put Hipple in. Maybe I don't really expect to see him put him in all day because I think he's made that decision to go with Danielson. So you got to make your bed, you're lying in. Bruce Harper, good return man, almost midfield for the Jets. As Sladaney will kick from the end zone. End over end, does not turn over. Short kick. Harper at the 45-yard line of the line. This could be a blowout here. Uh -huh. To the 36-yard line goes Bruce Harper. Great field position. And the Jets offensive unit comes back out. Richard Todd, number 14, a quarterback, Freeman McNeil, 24, Augustiniak, 35, the setbacks. And Lamb Jones, the great speedster out of the University of Texas, number 80. Wesley Walker, who has already scored twice tonight. The other wide receiver while the tight end is Jerome Barkham. Lions are a team in absolute disarray at this moment. They're not kicking well, they're not passing well, they're not running well, and they haven't been defending this Jets team all night. And now South after loose. First down 10. And Augustiniak did not watch that into his hand. It's contagious out there. It's contagious. Mm -hmm. It'll be second down and 10. There's a youngster that we were all really worried about a year ago when he had a broken rib. I think it was against New England and had some hemorrhaging internally. And he was in rather serious shape. Certainly was. That's the came back to finish the season, however. The dismayed coach of the Lions, Monty Clark. Second down and 10. Freeman McNeil. On the second and 10 call at the 32-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be third down and seven. Al Baker, who has been handled rather convincingly tonight by Chris Ward, the big left tackle for the Jets. And they've got a pair of tackles. Marvin Powell on the right, number 79, and Chris Ward on the left, number 72. That dulls the long smiling at us. Next to him, Marty Lyons and Sims. He knows he's upset. He knows he should have had those last two. Passing down, Bruce Harper is in. Single setback, good receiver. Third down and seven. Full blitz on Todd, and down he goes. It was Ray Oldham on the safety blitz. They had one setback. Todd had Harper in the pass pattern. Not enough folks to pick up their folks. He, mi he missed it, though, Frank. I think he had a chance. It's just, he just looked the wrong way. But out on the outside, here's Lamb Jones, and he's out there. He's in the area right where Olam came from. But he looked to his left first. By the time he got back to the right, there was Olam. 
Good pressure. Great yeah. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the Jets support the punt. Robbie Martin has dropped Chuck Ramsey. Very accurate kicking the ball out of bounds inside the 20. Second in the NFL a year ago doing that. Not a bad average there, is it? This time he hangs it high and tries to get his covered team down under. Fair catch, wisely called for and made by Robbie Martin. As the Jets punting unit was right under that ball. We'll be back at Pontiac in a moment. The punting unit was down there. Fair catch called for by Robbie Martin at the eight-yard line in Detroit. Starting deep in their own territory, down 21 to 3 with 12.30 remaining in the third quarter. Billy Sims. Taken there. Kenny Neal, 77, is having himself a good night. You've seen a lot of him on your screen. He's been in a lot of plays. He has had two individual sacks. Had a superb game last Sunday, Howard, against Green Bay. He gets better every time he plays. Right. But he's filling in for one of the best in the league, Joe Flecko. Sims got four, second down and six. 13-yard line. Bussey. Goes to the 15-yard line. Gain of a couple of yards. Crowd not liking that call. Yeah, that fooled a lot of people, particularly Gastineau. <laughs> Gastineau, again, he watched him, Don mentioned earlier, in the Superstars competition where he really did outstanding. But what surprised me in the 100-yard sprint, well, he didn't win it against the likes of Bob and Dwight Clark. He didn't. I think he ran right. about a 10-1. Wasn't bad. No. And he does a 40 in about 4, 5, 6. And he weighs 265. He does that seven-yard dash really quick. Sims has an opening. He does. Gets the first down. Navigates out close to the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Detroit at the 29-yard line. Jerry Holmes defensively. I'm always amazed when I see a back run with the ball and pick up eight or you know 15, 20 yards, whatever it was. And you know that other backs in the league just can't do this. And it's just that instinctive thing. He just got it. He knows how to run, when to make his cut. Got the most out of that that he could. Over 1,400 yards a year ago for Billy Sims in his second year. Danielson. Oh, oh no. Should have been it. By Mark Nichols, it would have been good for the first down. And a beautiful throw ball. Let me tell you something. Dorney has come back with renewed strength. He is doing a good job, as good as you can do on gas, you know. That ball was really well thrown. That's a well thrown ball. He knows it's well thrown, too. That was right on the money he was out. Give me a break. Somebody hold on to something out here. Martin yeah. knows that, too. Second down and ten. Gastineau and Dorney, they've been going at it all night. There they are, bottom of your screen. They'll get it on again. Both 260 pounders. Danielson looking for the first down, and he gets to Fred Scott. He has the first at the 43 yard line. Dorney got him that way. Well, in front of Bobby Jackson. They're mounting a drive. For the first time, and some of those Jets missed, missed opportunities could yet react against them. I'll tell you this, Michaels is a perfectionist, and when he looks at those films, he's going to point out every opportunity blown. He's not happy with the Jets missed opportunities, Terry. And Monty Clark's not even happy. They've marked it close to the 42, first and 10 Detroit. Bowling up to the 45-yard line, the all-time Detroit leading ground gainer, who has, in the past couple of years since the arrival of Sims, been really cut way back in the number of attempts he has the opportunity to try. There he is. Michaels, the old, and I might say, superb linebacker of Cleveland. The tough cookie, Frank, you know it. Doesn't hide his feelings. Second down, seven. Bussey looked to the inside, saw an opening. It was there for about a half a second, and then Salam closed it off. It'll be 
third down and seven. That was the whole pregame plan. When they were nothing, nothing, and three to nothing, Clark thought he could send his runners up the middle. Yeah, he did. At least when we spoke with him, he seemed very confident that they had a not only a good running game, but possibly an unusual, a few unusual plays. But I haven't seen them tonight. Third and seven. Lions at their 46-yard line. Danielson chased out of there again, and he'll go down. It was Ben Rudolph there first, and then he had a lot of help from his friend. Right there, you saw a quarterback at bay. He's looking deep downfield, long pass. He only needs, he's got a drive going. He only needs seven yards for the first down. Should have used one of those quick hitters, seven to ten yards zone, you know? The thing that I saw him do was I thought he left the pocket a little bit too quick. He uh, has been feeling that rush all night, so he got out of there a little bit maybe before he had to. Bruce Harper is deep for the Jets at the 15-yard line. Tom Spladini to bunch. And good coverage by the Lions. A flag is down in Calicut. Ken Calicut down there for the punting unit. On the specialty team, Calicut seems to make nine out of every ten tackles. He's sure down there in a hurry. Oh boy out of Clemson. Can't understand why Hoffa caught that punt. Pair of flags down, as a matter of fact, on the field. Once again, our referee tonight, Chuck Heberling. Should have let it go in, Don. I don't think he was expecting that big a kick. That thing really took off over his head. He, hey, when that thing turns over, it yeah. can often take a bounce back. Kind of forget which way you, where you are out there. He ran back a little bit further than get it. There's a flag down at the seven-yard line, and there is one up near midfield. Maybe offsetting penalty. Monty Clark would like Walt Michaels to form for Paul Brown as a player with the Cleveland Browns. Later, of course, Dallas. Well, we got a pair of them. And a face mask and an illegal use of the hand. I think what they were discussing, when did it happen? Here's Calicut. Coming down, let's just see if we can pick it up. I don't know. No face mask there. looked like a late hit. It did, didn't it? During the run back, the ball will be placed at the spot of the dead ball. First down going this way. Well, Chuck Everling worked it all out, and the Jets will be deep in their own territory. Jets, 21 to 3, 759 remaining in the third quarter. We'll be back in the Silver Dome in just a moment penalties after the ball was taken by the punting team and so the Jets have a first and ten the ball near their own six yard line Richard Todd cooled off somewhat here in the second half very important to keep that whole cohesiveness that they had in that first half together right now because they did they missed a couple of field goals we've talked about just get them down here and make a big mistake turn that thing around First and ten. Dusty Walker slips to the left. Lamb Jones to the right. Wayne Crutchfield. And the big rookie from Iowa State. Gets about a yard, and that's it. As Gary Danielson, who's been scrambling around out there for his life, gets a little bit of a breather on the sideline. Looks five years older than he did at kickoff. <laughs> and there's a lot of time left. Once again, three and one on the season, looking for their fourth win to join in the American Conference. Pittsburgh, Miami, the Raiders, and Cincinnati. And they all advanced to four and one yesterday. Second down and nine, Freeman McNeil. Wild up again with Detroit. Showing a little bit of life after coming out of the locker room here in the second half. Paul Michaels, fellow with his cap on backwards, the undersized tight end of yesteryear, teammate of Frank Gifford, Joe Walker. He calls all the plays, sending in Gaffney and 
Lamb Jones. He made some key catches for the Giants in those glory days, but only after Tittle and Connolly first looked to Shasta, Gifford, Roach, Morrison, Webster, then Morton came in. Third and long yardage for Richard Side. The two wide receivers, both on the left side, Lamb Jones, Wesley Walker. A lot of time from the end zone. Overthrowing Wesley Walker. James Hunter had good position, and Detroit should get good field position as the Jets will have to punt from their end zone. Chuck Ramsey comes out. Chuck Ramsey's not a long kicker. Very consistent, very good. Kicking it out of bounds. This half has a different look. This could become very interesting. Ray Olam is out there, that defense man. Ray's been hurt a little bit, and I think he's making some difference. He's got the experience, and he seems to try to pull some of those younger guys together. He blitzed earlier in the game. We had a look at Robbie Martin of Detroit. As the Lions go for it, Robbie Martin awaits the ball at midfield. Puts one tackle, but a host of Jets are there, and Detroit does have good field position near the 48-yard line of the Jets. 6-18 remaining now in the third quarter. And the Lions, with renewed life here in the second half, will be back with more action in a moment. First and 10, the ball at the 48-yard line of the Jets. The Lions down 21-3, to but when you possess in your backfield, the versatile Billy Sims. And it looks as though the Lions are coming to life, and perhaps the Jets are sagging. Well, this game certainly is far from over. Thompson will stick to the right. Seeing action here in the second half for Detroit. Danielson for Mark Nichols. Yes. A flag is down. It could have been a late hit, however, on Danielson. I'm sure it was. Holding his elbow, too. Danielson coming off. He was popped after he delivered the ball. Flag went down. Which, of course, will be assessed on the kickoff if, indeed, it is a roughing the passer. It will be. And this is vivid evidence of what happens when a team blows opportunities repeatedly. It catches up to you. I love it. We got a good ball game going here. These guys haven't done much. Mark Nichols out from the wide side. We mentioned Mark, only a second-year guy from San Jose State. He gets Hey, where he played first, Don. He played at Bakersfield College. Well, you and your Bakersfield and USC mm -hmm. guys, I'm telling you. Yeah. Born in Bakersfield and lived there. He beat we need Jerry Holmes over there to the inside. Here's the hit. Let's see where it comes from. Wham. Oh, Abdul. That was not a soldier of feet. Abdul had the head down. He just did not look up. You can see that ball was gone. Very interesting, isn't it? You can see it happening to the Jets. Well, let's hope he's not hurt. Now, Thorn Grimace right there. You get something wrong with that old throwing arm, and you're in trouble. Danielson, he said records for the Lions and the Tips completions and yardage. 1980 as we watch Eddie Murray. Well, the boy Eddie. Draw the Lions closer. And what looks like it was going to be a route in the first half might turn into a heck of a football game. The Lions are coming back to Jeff Nielsen has sent Mark Nichols deep. Watch number 74. That's Abdul Salam. He hits down Nielsen after he releases the ball and Beautiful stride right under that well-thrown ball is Nickel. Penalty assessed. Roughing the passer. Gary looked on the right. kickoff, and the Lions will be kicking the ball from midfield. And dropping for the Jets, Bruce Harper, number 42. Kurt Stone is back there, number 87. You know, Frank, when suddenly things aren't going for you, you no longer look awesome and weaknesses show. Jesse Johnson gave Jerry Holmes no help, but Jesse's a substitute for the injured Darrell Ray. Eddie Murray puts the upright, kicking from midfield, following the penalty. He said, oh, I'm just showing off. And the Jets will have the ball first and 10 at their own 20. Once again, a reminder, Wide World of Sports on Saturday, the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship, live from Sacramento, California, except in the Sacramento area. And that, of course, will match the champion, Rafael Bazooka Limon, against Bobby Chacon. They fought four times. 
And there's Stanton. He's standing. One win, one loss, and one draw. The big series for the Jets, I'll tell you. Crowd has come to life. Todd to Augustiniak. And he'll get four yards out over the 24-yard line. James Hunter there defensively for Detroit. I think that was a good call. What you don't want to call something that could go up, go wrong, blow up in your face. Very conservative sort of fake. You're going to pick up a few yards. Try to knock this thing down. The lines are rolling now. You're here at home. They're going to get a lot of noise in this place. The things start going bad. 79,000 have shown up. Only 641 no-shows from what turned into a sellout. Second down and six. Freeman McNeil tries to get outside, and he is smothered after a gain of about a half a yard. Dan White, very strong in that weak side defensively. Saw more Stan White than we did Johnny Carson on show on TV there for a long time. Yep. Oh, he had some exposure, didn't he? Yeah. Smart kid, lawyer. Yeah. Key factor in the union. He was on more than Johnny, but... Uh, not as much as Jerry Falwell, I don't think. Let's see if the Jets have to give it away here. Third down, long four. Word from the Detroit bench is that Danielson is fine. He'll be back in. There they come. Look at it. Wayne Fumble. 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 How about that? Yeah. Hey, the Lions are saying they've got it. It is Dan White. Touchdown Detroit, but it was Wayne Smith flying side on Richard Todd, jarred it loose. Ain't it funny? Has this turned around? Now it's up to the Jets coaching. Wayne Smith making up for one of those touchdowns thrown on him. How this team sags. Purifoy rumbles inside the five, and then Stan White was there. Opportunistic as always, Dan White. That's the touchdown. You're going to see Wayne Smith, number 44, come in. Richard never saw him to ride the last, knock the ball out. There goes Purifoy. Now the Jets have to look at their whole season. They've got tough Tampa Bay this Sunday. If they blow this game and look at Michael, oh boy. Oh boy. These teams don't like one another. That was nowhere. Team looked awesome the first half, and then suddenly flew opportunity after opportunity. It'll be second down goal to go. And the Jets Tiffany. You knew they were all coming on that play. Monty Clark might have had a few words to let fly at halftime. He was visibly upset has been upset over the last two losses of Detroit. Sam, try the ball. High, and I think the Jets have got the ball. They yeah. do. They do. Billy is not having one of his good nights. Ken Troy. Billy Sims was going to go over the top as he started up. The ball was knocked loose. And the Lions must really need touchdown pop it up he said sometimes it just don't make no sense it certainly doesn't i don't know if he ever got a good handle he didn't never had it never got the ball from danielson you see that ball bounce around in there what a strike he comes out of the pile and gets it back out to give richard Todd a little breathing room you know like that jet's runaway has turned into a real dog fight yeah and had danielson yeah. Not, it would have been a real dog fight 349 left. Billy Sims, that can't be happy. He's dropped a couple of sure passes. Now he's popped it up on a second down goal to go from the one yard line. Crutchfield. Yeah, good sign from the defense. They yeah. didn't let down. They're going nowhere. The Jets, they're just running plays into the line, and that's not going to get them anywhere. There's Kenny Shroy, who has picked up the fumble. Had Danielson not tackled him, he could have run that thing back about 95 yards. There was nobody else back there. Crutchfield got a yard. It'll be second down and nine. They can't get it out of there. Well, they're also sitting on an 11-point lead, even though the side has turned. And they do not want to get 
two chances down here. That's true. Freeman McNeil outside, piled up again. Gets a couple of yards. It'll be third and long, about seven. Lions have put pretty good damper on Freeman tonight. He only has in the area 40 to 45 yards gained. Unless he breaks a big one, his figures will recede. They were just throwing so well in the first half. They really, really used him just to kind of balance that up a little yeah. bit. And he picked up that early yardage. Look at those stats. And I'll show you why Freeman McNeil doesn't have a large number of yards rushing tonight. Third down, seven. Walk. Left to Walker. Put to the left. Going there by Jones in the slot. Bottom of your screen. And uh -huh. hand off. And forget that one. Bruce Harper just pounded there. William Gay. And Doug at the bottom English. of the pile was Doug English. Big Doug was the guy that came across and got it. You know, the fabulous first half passing stats for Richard Todd. I'm told he's only thrown for seven yards in the third quarter. And we only have two minutes left to go in that one. So... A big turnaround there. Jeff Ramsey kicking again from the end zone. Robbie Martin in midfield. Quick snap. Ramsey. High towering kick. Martin at midfield. Good move by Martin. And inside the 45-yard line to the 44. No question. We've got a ball game now. The Richard Todd, who was close to 300 yards in the first half. In the third quarter, seven yards. First and 10 Detroit, good field position, we'll be back. Third quarter, the Jets over the Lions, 21 to 10. The Lions, two and two in the season. They won the first two games of the season. Then after the eight weeks off of the strike, they came back with the consecutive losses to Chicago and then the Giants. And they feel, I think, to a man that they need a victory tonight to stay in the runoff to become one of the eight finalists in the playoffs from the NFC. First down of 10, 49, 44-yard line of the Jets, and Danielson back again. Dexter Fussy, nothing but white jerseys, and he gets to the line of scrimmage, taken first by Bobby Jackson. Danielson had just a superb year back in 1980, started all 16 games, set line records for attempts, completions, and yardage. And then a year ago, he broke a bone in his arm, and Eric Hipple replaced him. Hipple did surprisingly well. He was a starter up until tonight. And Monty Clark made the change to Danielson. Second down and 10. Danielson, Billy Sims. And Sims gets the first down, pops that marker, and picks up the first inside the 35-yard line. Gary Holmes, defensively for the Jets. Has now gained 120 yards in this quarter to the Jets' 10. And this man can himself explode from anywhere on the field to get you back into a football game. Until he arrived, Detroit had not had a winning season since 1972. First and 10. Gets inside the 30 for a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. Final seconds of the third quarter ticking away. And we will not get another playoff. And there it is. The Jets leading 21 to 10. After the end of three, we'll return for the fourth quarter action after this from our local station. We begin the fourth quarter. Frank Gifford, Howard Cosell, Don Meredith, the Detroit Lions have the football. Second down, seven. The ball at the 29-yard line of the New York Jets and the Lions down, 21 to 10. Danielson has got stuff out to the left. Bussy, and they missed the reverse, but it bounced right into Bussy's hand. And Bussy gets back to the line of scrimmage. That could have been a turnover, but the ball took a Detroit bounce. That was one of those new running plays that Monty was telling us about. You bounce it once, <laughs> come back around. It was pretty lucky, I'll tell you. Yeah, but it could, it could lull the, uh, the defense to sleep if they just bounce it once or twice. And they, they said, well, wait a minute. Clever. To work on plays like that. Third down, seven. The three wide receivers now for Detroit. Scott, Nichols, Leonard Thompson. Danielson 
Johnson gets it out to Sims. Well, get Bailey, make a move. Sims fighting and getting the first down. Good move by Danielson to even get the ball off, and then Sims fighting through one tackle to get the first down. Daryl Ray, we mentioned he's been hurt a little bit tonight, and this is just a lot of pressure back on Gary. He flips it out. That's the only place he could. Do that right under Lance Mel. There's the move. Just drop back a little bit. And they are really making mistake upon mistake, the Jets. 21-yard line, first Total down, 10. Turn about all the time in the world for Detroit to come back and win this game. Here's the man to do it, Billy Sim. Sim. First the inside the 15-yard line, close to the 13. Now, gain of seven. Looked like he's just sneaking around there, did he? Kind of going low, hiding. Don't anybody see him. Now he's chewing up yardage. The coaching pair of the Jets, once again, Walt Michaels to the right, Joe Walton to the left. It'll be second down and three. Jets defense beginning the show signs of fatigue. Top hitting football game. Detroit coming out of the second half. Smoke coming out of the rear. Sims once again gets the first down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first down. Goal to go. Good stop running. Oh, he is something. Ulysses Norris seems to be limping a little bit. Ankle tension. Now watch these statistics change from what they were at halftime with the total domination by the Jets. Set. Not nearly so dominant. Detroit on a roll once again. They had the ball after a fumble recovery inside the one by Stan White. They had a first down goal to go. Sims turned it back over. And Detroit prowling once again, trailing 21 to 10. First down goal to go. Danielson. Going for Thompson in some left. Good play by Holmes. Right there. Gary Holmes. All 6-3. He made a good move, but he didn't see that ball coming. He just reached up and swatted and happened to hit that ball. Let's see if we can see it. Kind of looked like he was a mix up in the backfield. He's back to him. He says, wait a minute. That hand happened to be right there. Detroit must get a touch. He is a long, skinny youngster, but I'll tell you one thing. He's a football player. He will hit you. you got to watch him stay with you. It's really skinny legs. He'll go. Keep the Lions eight points behind. They must get a touch. Second down, goal to go. Nine yard line. Danielson back again. Over the middle and it's complete. <laughs> Sims is a tough man to get down. He smells that goal line, takes it to the five yard line to compare a Jeff to bring him down. Well, Bottle be third down goal to go. That's the point, Frank. Bottle had to have help from Kenny Schroy. Play for Danielson. What he's saying, get that thing in here in a hurry. And what Danielson wanted was Ulysses Norris back in at tight end. Dave Hill came in a moment ago when Norris limped off, but Dave Hill is hurt. Has a very sore leg. Is not expected to be in the lineup tonight. And now he's out. Norris back in. It's an interesting stat there. The Jets have not allowed a point in the fourth quarter. Oh, that's good. And they still have it. Almost picked off. Danielson tried to squeeze it into Mark Nichols, and it was just about picked off. I right thought that was a certain intercept. Yeah, when I said that, Eddie had thrown it right to two white shirts. Fourth down. Here comes Eddie Murray. Crowd booing. Uh-oh. Mel may be hurt a little bit. No, it looks like he's walking it off. An apparent field goal attempt. But keep in mind that Eric Kippel is now the backup quarterback. He's the holder. Eddie Murray delivers. And the Lions have been battering the Jets, but they have to settle for three. They trail 21-13, 11-03 remaining in the game. That's to kick off. The Lions have to be disappointed. They had a first down goal to go inside the one. They fumbled that away. They had a first down goal to go at the five-yard line, or the nine-yard line. And with the two first and goals, they come away with three points. So they've blown opportunities, too. 
and that could catch up with them. What the Jets need from their point of view is field position. They haven't had it this half. Harper and Stone deep for New York. Eddie Murray slices it, and it'll go out of bounds, and they'll bring it back and kick from the 30. Sometimes you pay trying to kick it to Stone instead of Harper. That time they did. They were very successful earlier in keeping it away from Harper. I would assume that's what he was. It looked like he was trying to kick that top of the ball right. like it bounced around down there. That time he just hooked it. There is Bruce Harper in five years as the Thanks. principal return man for the Jets. Never a touchdown return, but very safe back there. He doesn't cough it up. He has a career average, a little under 23 yards. He's been known to cough it up, Frank. Opening kickoff, playoff game against Buffalo last year. That's what I thought I said. He yeah. <laughs> He'll cough it up. He coughed it up and only in playoff game. He came in for a touchdown. Yeah, Buffalo. Well, they have an asterisk. <laughs> I think what's turned this thing around a second half may be the line defense has been able to put a little bit of pressure. They, as you mentioned, the poor field position. They have not had really good field position, but at least they've come back, played a little bit more cohesively. There were big holes in that, particularly the secondary that first half. And Rich will be looking for him again. I'm sure when he gets the ball. Good return out over the 30, close to the 33-yard line. And the Jets will have some breathing room for the first time in some time. First time this half, really, except for their opening drive. Then they got the big sack that stopped that, took them out of field goal range. And after that, they die. Well, let's see if they can come alive right now. That tells you a lot right there. Six yards. There's well, we have another quarter. To just settle down, those openings still will be there. On first down, lots one. of time for Richard Big Todd, hole. and there is Lamb Jones. He found that gap in the zone, gets the first down up close to midfield. Right, Richard got kind of pushed back on his can a little bit there, but he did just wait, had plenty, plenty of time to throw this. Lamb, as fast as he is, still took a little time to get down there, about 25 yards. Good pressure. Anyway, both Lamb Jones and Wesley Walker can do. They can run that deep route awfully well, but they, with that tremendous speed, they can take just an ordinary turn in so deep upfield. Again, they give them room, don't they? That was Bill Gay that put the pressure on the on Richard the last time. Todd now over 300 yards. First down near midfield. Todd again. It's a two McNeil. And Freeman McNeil down the sidelines, and he is going to pick up another first down. They're very close to it. Might just be inches short. He really spun very well there. Away from the tackle, keeping his balance. Okay, major trade today. Connie Lansford led the American League in batting two years ago. Gary Hancock and a player to be named for the Oakland A's for Tony Amos and Jeff Newman. Amos should hit a lot of home runs. In Boston with the green month. Mickey Schuler is tied in now for the Jets number 82. Good blocker, a fine pair of hands. Freeman McNeil ducks one Detroit line, gets the first down. He's at the 37 yard line. And the Jets have got it back in gear. I think they all felt their wheels were coming off in the third quarter. But Detroit, with those two first down and goals, could only put up three points. Kind of sense the letdown in the crowd, too. This is the first crowd we've had since we've been back. Well, they seem to be in this ballgame. First and ten, Walker is stripped to the left. Barkham in the wingback spot. Barkham is wide open, but a flag down, and Todd hung it up there. Left it up, and Bobby Watkins, a rookie from Southwest Texas State, picked it off, but again, a flag is that'll be down. holding. They should decline the penalty and get the ball back as quickly as possible. So Detroit gets the interception. Holding. Against the Jets. Holding. Offense number 72 will be declined. Chris First Ward down. working against Al Baker. Chris Ward, number 72. First time today. Chris is 
notable for holding, at least in the minds of officials around the league. And had Todd had the time. We said a little earlier, it could have been six, but Detroit has the ball back. Lions, Bobby Watkins, the fifth man in their nickel defense, coming up with the interception. The Jets holding. Penalty declined. First and ten Detroit. They trail 21 to 13. 908 remaining in the game. They have the ball at their own 15-yard line. Danielson going for Norris. Yeah. And what did they call? What did they call? Darrell Ray has the football. Norris was pounded. He's calling it a fumble. And the Jets are saying they have the football. Well, why couldn't he pick it up and run? I wonder. Well, I don't exactly understand. what Darrell Ray is trying to get the word on. Norris was really hit. Came up the football. Quick football. Ken Stroy and Stan Blink are both colliding with Ulysses Norris. Chuck Heverly, give us the word. We have a completed pass and a fumble recovered by the White. First down. Get it. Look at it from the other side, and you'll see Blinka and Troy put a hit on Norris. Start off the arrow ray come up with it. He had good time to throw that time. The ball is into the Ulysses. There's Troy. There's Blinka. Now if he fumbles, bobbles loose. Why can't he run with it? He most certainly he should be able to run with it. I don't get it. First and ten, the Jets. 45 yard line. That play's worked well for him tonight, hasn't it? That's a little leak in the flat. That's right. They're going out there where those linebackers leave from. The linebackers start to stop dropping too fast. Send that back up right there, and there it is. That's a patented Joe Walton thing. Dump off. Well, sometimes not bad. And it picks up the first down at the 34-yard line. Nobody there. You see him coming back a little bit too late. He's got too much room to run. Siniak does it well, too. He stays in there if the linebacker doesn't blitz. He just stays in there until the linebacker drops deep into his pass defense, and then he's wide open. Now the Siniak again. Right up the middle. Look at him run. The Siniak inside the 20 to the 17. Bobby Watkins takes him there. Now, you see these two plays. You wonder, now this is a jet. This is the jet thing we saw in the middle. There's a quick little trap over on the inside. Good move. In the middle, came back out right up. Stan Waldemore was the guy that sprung him, number 70, who trapped there. And Augustinia came out. Oh, Augie got a roll, Augie roll. Playing some game for a guy who couldn't get a job a couple of years ago. First and 10. Ball near the 17 yard line. Nobody there. Augustinia this time runs right. And to Big Doug English, number 78. If I was all guys, wait a minute, Richard. Would you send word back to the bench that tell him McNeil is also in his backfield? I brought this thing three times in a row. Give me a break. Sam English just took Joe Fields, spun him right into the ball carrier, and then took Augustiniak with him. Doug's been playing well tonight, Frank. He, he's yes, he has. moving around in there, closing some holes. And Donnie's done a good job on Gastineau in the second half. Second down, 12. Freeman McNeil stays in. Tom Newton comes in. Number 44 as a setback for the Jets. We'll watch it from the end zone. Here comes the pass rush. No and it's wide open. Wesley Walker. Now he had the blitz on. It was man to man, but somebody blew the coverage on Walker. He gets his third touchdown of the night. And the blitz was beautifully picked up. It was. That was the key to it. James Hunter had to think, man, don't I have any help back here? Wide open. sitting in there. He was fascinated by the blitz. Uh, what is it? Let's watch these guys run and jump. Good pickup. Sign of good coaching. You pick up all those blitz men. If you don't, Todd would have been on his back. The Walker has tied a death record of three touchdowns in a single game. All from the arm of Richard Todd. We'll be back in a moment. Had a Jets record tonight, becoming one of eight Jets players to score three touchdowns in a single game, and this one isn't over. 6:45 remaining. Pat Leahy to kick off. Robbie Martin is dropped along with Rick Kane for Detroit. This will be Rick 
Kane. And Kane over the 25 to the 27 yard line and Detroit now trailing 28 to 13. A rather large assignment ahead. I would say what? I'd say large. back there on his right wrist. Felt like a bow. Doesn't seem to be bothering too much. Tough. Wrist troubled him a little coming into this game. Probably been blamed a little more. 27 yard line now for Detroit. First down and 10. And it's then almost picked off by Blinko. Intended for Leonard Thompson. to his right. You see him kind of turn and twist in the middle. Somewhat of a slow drop. You see the top of your screen right there on the left. Ball's thrown in pretty good position. He turned around, saw he couldn't intercept it, just batted it down. Second down, 10. Forrest King, number 25, and Rick Kane come in for Detroit. As Billy Sims will catch a breather, and it might give you an idea of what Bonnie Clark thinks the condition of this game is in. He takes Billy Sims out. Puts the ball behind Rick Kane and completely will be third down again. Well, your friend old Mo has really gone around again. Old circle. Mo's been busy tonight. Opened up with the Jets, hung around the first half of them, came back, joined Detroit. It looked like Detroit was going to blow the Jets away in the third quarter. And now the Jets. Let's throw it again to lead 28-13, 6.26 remaining in the game. Third down 10, 27-yard line of Detroit. And the center. Oh. the ball high to Martin Nichols. And I'm not so sure how high Nichols wanted to go for that. I'll tell you, there's one, one thing I've noticed. Number one, the wide receivers in particular. They haven't gotten open that much, and they've dropped so many passes. And this is really so discouraging. Yeah. You get a drive going, and here's all of a sudden you put the ball there as well as you can, and it's not even close. See, that's happened. I don't. I'd like to know how many times they have dropped balls tonight. That's the eight or ten. Jadini on. Bruce Harper has dropped to the Jets. Beautiful punt by Jadini. Takes Harper all the way back inside his 25 yard. Richard Ty picking up the final word, and we'll be back at the Silver Dome in a moment. Injuries for the Jets. Donnie Lamb Jones has a sprained ankle. We understand he will not be back. Mike Augustiniak sprained right wrist. You saw that a moment ago. He will not be back. Crowd starting to disperse here at the Silver Dome as the Jets have a lead of 28-13, 6:08 remaining in the game. Bobby Jones in a one-wide receiver now for the Jets, number 89. Freeman McNeil. McNeil trying to find an opening on the left side. Cracks at the line of scrimmage. Maybe squeezed out a yard. The Jets looking to become 4-1 and one, along with Pittsburgh, Miami, the L.A. Raiders. San Diego and Buffalo are 3-2 and two in the American Conference. Seattle, Cleveland, New England, 2-5. and five. Of course, the playoffs begin with eight teams from each conference January the 8th. Well, if you're four and one, it's going to be pretty hard to miss the playoffs. Yeah, I think they would, the team, one of the teams, certainly you'd expect to see in the playoffs, too. They're a good football team. Second down and about nine. Top steps back up by somebody. The ball. Whistle blown. Dave Purifori was in there first defensively for the Lions. I'd like to remind you tomorrow on ABC's World News Tonight, video games for school profit. Quarters for Pac-Man are paying for scholarships, and the student lounge at San Jose High School in San Jose will be excitement, play havoc with the child's learning. That's tomorrow on ABC's World News Tonight. I want to check that. Third down and about 12. Loss of three on the sack. That's not the bench for the guys that are ahead. Bruce Harper. Lots of problems. Jimmy Williams, the rookie linebacker out of Nebraska. And they will just throw another flag down there, too. Gotten sloppy. Very sloppy. Had a little surge of adrenaline.
Dillon's bluffing there that for opening minutes of the first of the second half, yeah. it looked like Detroit was going to get back in this thing. It first, went away. First half, the Jets look positively awesome. Mm. Holding offense, number 60, decline, fourth down. Dan Alexander holding. Detroit wants the football back. They decline it. And out comes Chuck Ramsey and Robbie Martin drops for Detroit. Todd on the night, 22 of 31, 351 yards. Three touchdowns and one interception. The Jets went into a little mental lap that there's no reason for them to. They just kind of went flat. They could have moved that ball to the championship for them, but they didn't. Turnover, turnover. Ramsey hangs it up, and it does not turn over. And it takes a very tough one to destroy. Bounce, and it's picked up there by Bob Trigger. First down, Detroit. 39 yard line. They're going to do it. They better do it in a hurry. 28 yard punt. Next Sunday, Detroit will be at Green Bay. Then they close out their season against Minnesota and Tampa Bay with their extra game, January the 2nd, to be the Green Bay Packers. That's no easy task, playing that Packer team twice. Packers with Dallas and Washington tied atop the National Conference with four one record. On first and ten, Dan Nissen. Fires over the middle and completes to Rick Kane out of the backfield and Rick Kane is up to midfield for the first down. Greg Puddle made the stop. To study the Detroit statistics thus far this year, their principal receivers are back coming out of the backfield. Dan Nissen. Oh. How do you like that? I'm sick and tired of that. Yeah. Incomplete. That's unbelievable. But I, I just, you can imagine how frustrated he must be. And he must be. Leonard Thompson had it right in his hand. I don't think he used his hands. He bounced it off his stomach. Watch this. Walt. <laughs> mm. Second down and ten. You know, you got to feel sorry for Danielson. His statistics would be respectable with any kind of receiver. It'd be terrific. And it's his first game back, and it's... Uh, they have this, you only look at the bottom line, and they're losing. On second and ten, Danielson out of the pocket. It's downfield. Oh. This one is picked off. And he's down Bobby Jackson. Jackson with the interception and brings it back out to the 27-yard line. Well, after a while, you just look out there and say, who can catch this ball? And the Jets are doing a better job than the Lions tonight. So throw it to them. Once again, a reminder, Saturday, Wide World of Sports, the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. The champion, Raphael Bazooka Limon, facing Bobby Chacon for the title. Fourth time these fighters have met. They've been some brawls at ABC's Wide World of Sports. 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central Time. The WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. Azuka Limon against Bobby Chacon. And next Monday, we'll be in Houston. That'll be, we'll have some fun down there. That'll be Texas a good ball State game. Texas State Championship. Yeah, they're all the pro football. They'll get it at home. Wayne Crutchfield had a bubble. Bobbles the ball, and I think the Jets get it back. Crutchfield. football back <laughs> and they'll mark it inside the 36 yard line it'll be second down and seven Daniel still on the bench disconsolate but he really shouldn't be not in a personal sense well, well, Michael, Michael, good things ahead very solid football team both offensively and defensively Working on the clock. It's a yard, perhaps a yard and a half. It'll be third down and five. Jets next Sunday, as Howard mentioned earlier, have Tampa Bay at Chase Stadium. That's not going to be an easy one. No way. You better not have the kind of lapses that they've had here this evening. And their other opponents, Miami, Minnesota, in their ninth game, the added one against the Kansas City Chiefs at Kansas City. Lions take a timeout. Lions have two remaining. 
The Jets have a third down and five, and Richard Todd will move over to the Jets bench. Todd with an explosive first half. That was really hurt Detroit, but Detroit again had that opportunity with two first and goal in the third quarter, and they could only capitalize for three points. You really did get the feeling in that first half that they could almost score it well. I've never seen receivers as wide open as some of his receivers were. Uh, missed a couple of field goals. Could have put it really out of bounds. They could have even scored on one of those drives. Wouldn't have picked that, that field goal. Well, they talk it over. Let's pause five seconds and allow our stations all around the country identify themselves. Channel 10, WPLG TV, Miami. Richard Todd on the night. All right. All three of those touchdowns, of course, to Wesley Walker. Not too shabby a night. Not at all. 351. That's a good Looked total like, yardage. Looked like it might be 500 at <laughs> one point. Yeah, that was when I was doing my ad and takeaways. That was good. I figured it out. 125 the first quarter equals that. Detroit apparently heading toward their third consecutive loss since football was resumed. I'm not surprised. They've had a more, I think, turmoil on this club than some of the others concerning the strike. Third down five. Todd. Gaffney. Uh, and a dual possession. It's the offensive man, but I think Gaffney has it. Oh, he had it all the way. That Smith has had such a tough night tonight. They're beating him to death. He looked, saw he was beat. He didn't even go for the ball. Todd may get to 400 yet. Double coverage. Short zone. Paul Smith got the deep zone back there, and, and uh, Gaffney runs right by him. Smith trying to get deep. Yeah, you don't. He just turned him every which way but loose. And the first down is at the 33-yard line, and this time the Lions will not stop it with a timeout. Yeah, made him mad. I wouldn't stop it either. Jets leading 28-13. Keep in mind, points count very heavily in any kind of a tiebreaker. Movement, you thought, fly flies. <laughs> and I'll tell you, with eight teams each going into the playoffs from each conference, we're going to have, we're going to need some tiebreaking rules. Here's the call. False start, number 61, offense, first down. John Roman, false start. More than likely, I wouldn't have to mention this, but I'm going to. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, other use of this telecast, I would express written consent of the National Football League's privilege. My first down, 15. That was Crutchfield. I need more time for that, man. I mean, that's, that's not fair. I had to rush it all the way through. I really should. That's uh, very important. Well, we got the two-minute warning. That'll give you time to... Well, relax. We well, usually on. go away. Yeah. Okay, I'd, I'd like to do it after this message, so please don't go away. Come right back. I'd like to read you a disclaimer because I read it so well. Goal line, but is pulled back by a player whose feet are within the field to play. And the ball is down by a cowboy at the two. Now you make the call. Where do you spot the ball? Did you make As long as a player's feet are within the field to play, he can reach over the line for the ball. Spot the ball at the two. On second down, 13. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. Now, its intent is for the private use of our audience. So any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. See, yeah, that was much better. Scott Durking, right side. Gain of about a yard. It'll be third down. About 12 yards. And Detroit uses one more timeout. You know, Todd moves over to the sideline. Marty Lyon close up. You know, Frank, if Todd threw for 25 more yards, he'd set the league record for yardage this season. You know, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I heard that just a moment. I know. Ago. I figured you did. Yeah. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Dotson, who invites you to test drive the exciting new Nissan Pulsar NX at your Dotson dealers. And by Miller Highlights, the best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller time. Walton's got his cap on. Front. 
Executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football Guru. produced tonight by Chet Cordy, who ordinarily does the directing of Bobby Goodrich, our regular producer, home with hopefully a slight bout of pneumonia. He'll be better. We're directed tonight by Craig Janoff, technical director Joe Chavo, social director Jack Graham, our technical manager Coach Coltrane, unit manager Lynn Nathan, our telecommunications manager Frank Adamo, assistance to the producer John McGinnis and Kim Belton. Third down, 13. Lions have one timeout remaining with which to stop the clock. And they're down 48-13 with 1.52 on the clock. This is Marion Barber, first year man out of Minnesota. Second round draft pick a year ago. He's on the injured reserve. And we've got a fourth down. Final timeout taken by the Lions. Richard Todd exhausting himself over there that. with Joe Walton and Walt Michaels. Doesn't appear they're going to bring in Lay for a field goal attempt either. They're going to, but they may run this fourth down. So in the American Conference, the standings after five games played with four remaining, it's going to be the Jets, the Steelers, the Dolphins, the Raiders, and the Bengals. All at four and one. San Diego and Buffalo, three and two. Seattle, Cleveland, New England, two and five. Once again, eight teams from each conference will move to the playoff. We made up, of course, of 16 teams. They start play the weekend of January the 8th. They'll continue through the 15th and 16th with the conference championship January 22nd and 23rd, and of course, the Super Bowl in Pasadena January 30th. Fourth down, Lions have no more timeouts. Chuck Ramsey and Duke Hunt. Robbie Martin is there. Will be a delay of game call as the Jets just let the 30 second clock wind down. Delay of the game number 15 offense. This thing is really disintegrated. By the way, in your reading of the credits, Frank, may I add one further name? Steve Hurst, who does such a good job for us producing statistics. He does. Uh, he's got that computer her humming. More than that, he has ideas. Now, that could be dangerous. You hold down those ideas over there, Steve. Chuck Ramsey, good out-of-bounds kicker. Normally looking for one right here. Their catch called for, however, by Robbie Martin at the 10-yard line in Detroit. Has the football back. They have no timeouts, and they trail 28 to 13. Detroit will fall to two and three, and they will join Chicago, Minnesota, the Giants, San Francisco, and Tampa Bay. Still a possibility of getting into the playoffs, but at the moment, Dallas Green Bay, Washington, they're four and one. New Orleans, St. Louis, Atlanta, three and two. Well, clearly, five teams in the AFC are in perfectly fine position. Four and one. Then Buffalo and San Diego at three and two. That makes seven, and then it's a mad scramble for the remaining berth. down the 10, 10 yard line and there had to be movement because all four Jets win at once. Meantime, why don't we take a look, Frank, at the NFC standings. Dallas, Green Bay, Washington, superbly positioned. Dallas, of course, going against Houston next Monday night. Atlanta, New Orleans, St. Louis, which has been a surprise team, St. Louis, along with New Orleans. And after that, a scramble. I'm surprised to see Philadelphia down there bringing up the end. That's a, been a surprise, I think, just as much in the other way. I think Dick Vermeil's surprised. Well, they got a shot from the Cardinals yesterday. Five-yard penalty against Detroit, and we are going to be very close to a safety, but I think Danielson was able to navigate out of the end zone. Yep, they mark it inside the one. The clock continues to roll. Since Detroit looks like they're going to put it in the air, we might come up with a safety. Danielson. Oh, Rick Kane knocks down another one to the very end. I'm going to put so many people on defense. 
<laughs> you know, he's just steaming inside. He thought he had his offense going pretty well. So about Monty Clark. He can't be happy tonight. That's what we're looking forward to. Yeah. Hopefully with you. Not the worst schedule in the world. Atlanta, Niners should be a good one. Cincinnati, San Diego, terrific. Buffalo, Miami, always a hotly contested game. Bitter rivalry. And then Cowboys against the Vikes. On a clear day, Tommy Kramer can see forever. Third down, a flag is down. Danielson hangs one up looking for a flag. But he gets an interception. But again, a flag is down, line of scrimmage. Bobby Jackson comes down with the football for the Jets. Flag was picked up by the head linesman, so I would assume the penalty is against Detroit. And the interception will stand. Illegal motion, offense. It'll be declined. First down. Danielson comes off and can hold his head up. Had just a few of the passes that he hit the receivers with and caught tonight. His numbers would not have been all that bad, and he was under constant harassment. That's, of course, last year's NFL leader in quarterback sacks with 66. They miss Joe Flacco, but they have been getting sterling performance out of Kenny Neal who has filled in. One more timeout for Detroit. Jets can run it out easily. Richard Todd drops to one knee. Somebody puts the hand on his back. Clock continues to roll. Thanks once again to our staff man, Jerry Rucco, and our spotter, Steve Dezica. The missed games with Baltimore, Houston, Denver, twice with Buffalo, Kansas City, and Pittsburgh, and New England during the strike. Take on Tampa Bay next Sunday at Chase Stadium. Now the Lions try to get it back together against Green Bay. This will be the last play of the game. And now they just can just let us kick off. And they're going to win this from 28 to 13. And Monty Clark is ticked off. Uh, he was ticked off earlier. We talked with him today. And, of course, they have been abusing the Lions rather severely, and they continue to what remains of this crowd of, of nearly 80,000. We'll be returning to the Silverdome in just one moment. And the final score from the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, 28-13. The Jets over the Detroit Lions. Remember, stay tuned. It's been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.